Hello you, my name's John C. And I'm Brandon, also known as B Squared, and this is This Week in E. Each week we'll be wading through the Inklands, into the Inklands especially today, uh, to bring you the news and the views on all things Lorcana. Coming up, we have our semi-regular segments, Main Street Market Watch and You Made Me Ink. And uh, we'll be discussing the latest topics and taking opinions from the live chat. Hello, Hello live, live chat! chat. 
Yeah, so that's where the script. That's where the script right, ends, buddy. That's where your script ends, my friend. It, the next know, li- the next line just, says Brandon dot dot dot. So dot, you go dot, ahead. Dot. We're there. We're in the Inklands. I like, it's, it's weird because I, so, I like to say we just say hi to the chat and then we move yeah. on. But I actually yeah. like acknowledging the chat. Yeah. And it takes them a second to catch up. It so does. <laughs> there was a little bit of an awkward pause. Hey, googling Espion Warlock. All the cool people are here. Look. Yeah, um, James here. Yeah, it's good to see you all, folks. Hi, bye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's been a bit of a long weekend, and I know, and I know, it's become a bit of a meme at this point. But we genuinely wrote this show <laughs> about three minutes <laughs> before yeah. we went live today. Uh, we quickly, because I, I was a bit delayed, and obviously, you know, we've both had a huge busy weekend with the release and everything else, mm. and Brandon's had family down as well. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, so this was literally a. Let's um, let's let's quickly push uh, put some some notes onto paper and figure out what we're actually going to be talking about today. And uh, and obviously, yeah, the big thing is into the Inklands. It's here. It's out. We're uh, we're loving it. Yeah, I'm super excited. What do you guys do for the weekend? Or what did you do? I mean, I know you, your shop did a lot of stuff. Yeah. What, so what yeah, in the ch- like? in the chat, let us know what did you play in? Did you do starter decks? Have you done some drafts? Have you just grabbed products? Mm-hmm. Are you still waiting? Are you do, are you a big box guy? Uh, let us know, and while you do, we'll we'll fill uh, uh, we'll fill you in with what we've been up to. So yeah, I had a busy weekend. Obviously, manage a store that uh, Lokan is very popular at. So for us, we did a sixteen person Friday night uh, starter deck tournament, and then on the Saturday we had a thirty two person uh, starter deck tournament, and then on the Sunday we tried to do our kids one again. Didn't quite get as many. Uh, as much interest this time, we only had four kids come out for it, uh, but they still had a blast, and we just sort of let them play all against each other in like a little round robin thing. So, um, so yeah, so that was that was most of my weekend was kind of managing and running that. On the Saturday, I man, I took a deck with me. I managed to get a deck built, and I took that with me and just kind of in between the starter deck rounds, like whilst they were playing, uh, I managed to get some games in with the handful of people who were there just doing some sort of ca- some casual play. Um, so and, and it did pretty good. So it was nice to be actually play stuff and obviously open loads of product both for the store and for myself. Uh, what did you? What What about you, Brandon? What did you open first of all? What What What, what did you crack? Yeah. So um, I was able to pre-order a box for the first time or like some product for the first time for my store, which was really cool. I got it. I think it was like at MSRP or slightly under. So that was really nice. Awesome. Um. So uh, sat nope. Friday, I took the day off of work um went to the lgs picked up a box both starters um a trove and a gift set there was a single gift set that that entire store got and wow. i was the only one there like to get lorcana stuff so they were like you're the only one here you can have it wow. um and then i got a um i think they had two troves in total so wow. i just got one um but did that and then went home, recorded a uh, product opening for that. So opened all of that. Um, didn't leave anything sealed this time. It was a pretty, uh, yeah, I got it was a pretty good trove. I watched the video. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. Got a pretty good trove. Pulled morph here. It was a uh, very exciting mm. enchanted morph. Um, it was one of my chases. And if you haven't seen the video, you should go watch it. I post I posted it today. Uh, I spoiled it a little bit, which kind of like made it even more exciting like yeah. seeing the card before getting through the pack because then yeah. i was just excited to rush i mean you pack. can't it's difficult to miss them honestly um because it, you know the second you see just that slither of the corner you know like mm-hmm. they, they really pop out what i've seen a few people start to do is they o- they open the pack like face down mm-hmm. take the the bonus cards off and then and then go one two three and place them face down and then look at okay. the common, and then look at the commons, and then pick up. And I'm like, that seems like a lot of work. But if you really want to, <laughs> you really want to edge yourself <laughs> into, a, <laughs> into that good pull. That's that's a way to do it. <laughs> I thought it was funny because I had noticed, like, while I was opening it, um, I was doing that for the most part. Like, I was mm. getting rid of the new. Um, I think I threw them all away. The new like rules cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would get rid of them and everything would be upside down and then I'd line the pack up and then like turn it around so you couldn't see anything really well. Yeah. And for some reason on that one, I just like turned the pack around and pulled the uh, yeah. rules cards out and, you know, slipped the enchanted out with it. But it was yes. fun. I d- did that. And then um, for my draft or so Saturday, I just, that was basically everything that I did Friday. Um, 
I had to like finish cleaning and get a, another video out um, that uh, was top five cards from each ink for the set. Um, really good. Well, what's going to watch? And, and um, Saturday, I woke up. It was my birthday, so parent or my um, family was coming into town. Uh, but I told them it was release weekend, so I was going to a draft, <laughs> and <laughs> and so um, I went to a draft. Yeah, I went to a draft uh, about 40 minutes from from where I live, and it was very fun. In pack two or three, I opened up oh, this, look at this, this beautiful girl. Yeah, <laughs> the the uh, storyborn Ursula Deceiver of all Enchanted. Yeah. Um, so I didn't even I didn't even I could not tell you what else is in the pack because I just pulled the back one out first. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, my God, like showed it to everybody. And I, then passed the pack. I, I, was, I like... kind of love the idea of you going, oh, that's amazing. But do you know what? In a in a such a removal light set, Baboom is very playable. <laughs> yeah, there, there's an Along Came Zeus in here. I mean, like, uh... <laughs> that's amazing. So, yeah. Um, but, then, uh, so how does the store deal with uh, drafting something like that then? Do they let you, will they let you proxy it in so you can actually play with it or would they just expect you to play with it as the enchanted or? I, I'm sure they would have let me proxy. Yeah. There's like, it's such a small like community and store. There are only six yeah. of us there to draft. Just doing um, a box. Yeah, yeah, basically. So that's and what so... we do. If if anyone pulls one in a starter deck or a draft, I'll literally go and grab a, a flounder or something out of the bulk and literally and just mm -hmm. write on it what it is and say just keep the enchanted around so that people can, you know, reference it for you know cost or whatever and ability. But I don't expect you to shuffle that up and play with it if you don't want to. So yeah, yeah, and and I actually didn't like there there weren't very many songs that I ended up drafting anyway and I don't mm. think there were a ton of songs in the set that yeah. Ursula would benefit from specifically so I ended up not even putting her in my draft deck. Yeah, and no, I went that's up, fair. Went undefeated in the draft 2 for 3 rounds so got a bunch of packs from that uh, which was really fun so really really great day, really great weekend. Pulled um I didn't pull like the best legendaries. I ended up getting one from each ink uh, ink color from all the packs that I um, mm -hmm. pulled and ordered some stuff on Friday evening, trying to get stuff on a discount. Um, held off on some stuff, which I might regret later, uh, <laughs> but we'll look at that later in the show. Yeah, definitely. We'll we'll definitely talk about the singles prices because they're they're interesting. I'll be honest with you; they're doing exactly what I would what I would expect a CCG singles price to do now. So, like that, it tells me that the market is definitely settling into like players and, mm -hmm. and, and and collectors of the game and, and a little less of the speculation side of things, um, which is good, I think. So, yeah, that's definitely yeah. something we'll look at in a bit. So, uh, so yeah, it was good to play. I got I got a couple of enchanters. I've only got one of them here with me. I got a Robin Hood. Uh, there we oh, go. So there he is. Very nice. And I got a Sorcerer's um, Hat as well. I'm actually trading both of them for Akita enchanted <laughs> um I, I, they definitely get a better deal than i do with that but mm -hmm. akita is just one of the ones that i really want and I, i've settled into the fact that i just have one a set and it's one i love and Kida is the one i wanted so so i'm yeah. doing it and and kind of happy with it uh james with the incredible donation. wow thank you my friend. <laughs> yeah thank you so much Holy james crap, that's very kind i hope that was very i hope that's just you being generous and not pressing zero too many times yeah he <laughs> just, might have pressed <laughs> extra oh sure i meant to give him a fiver <laughs> uh, we appreciate it that means we hit the target it'll update in a minute i imagine and i and and uh brandon and, uh, gets paid <laughs> Yeah, now John T takes his shirt off, right? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> We're back into After Dark. Oh, we can't call it After Dark now because uh, your Breezy's on. Yeah, yeah. why Breezy place. doing some really cool stuff uh, with his live stream over there yeah. on Tuesdays, I think. You guys they're, should all check doing, it out. they're all doing the weekly show now, in they, buds? <laughs> We're trendsetters, yeah. right? And totally yeah. not... Illumiteers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, I've I've always said I I, I feel I feel. Um, like sort of not spiritually but like you know within in 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 spirit we kind of took the mantle off of uh, hobbies and happiness round tables mm -hmm. that they used to do before yeah. the, before the game was even a thing um they were the ones that really sort of started that idea of doing something a bit regular and uh, uh, you know getting mm -hmm. the people talking about the game and stuff so uh, yeah that's awesome uh, yeah thank you james we appreciate it i don't know the thing the thing should update but somebody mentioned that it didn't last time as well so uh oh 
but there you go. <laughs> just, <literally, laughs> as a, just to prove me wrong, it did it I as, uh, as I mentioned it. Ah, oh, rice and chips tonight, boys. That's such a British thing to say. <laughs> Beans uh, and rice. Another hundred to put a John Tickets. You can't pay me enough to put the shirt back on, I'm afraid. <laughs> That's it now, Elliot. It's off. <laughs> it's off for good now. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, overall, um, personally and, like, locally, the launch was a huge success. Um, everyone was super happy. We managed to get products into people's hands more than we've ever done before. Uh, nice. We've still, We still personally had to limit it a little in as much as I, I we couldn't just put it on the website and say come and get it um so what what we actually did was we took about a third of our allocation and all of the league players we actually sort of like and privately messaged them and said would you like to buy a box from us mm -hmm. um to all of the people who come out and regularly play um so all of those who wanted one or, or could get one got a box uh, obviously we did a little bit for singles and then we are uh, we're still going to stagger it out and put a few boxes out a week just so that people have still got a pack or two here and there they can pick and you know just kind of keep it going um, and then obviously some of it's been kept for running into drafts and uh, prizing for tournaments and what have you so um it hasn't quite been the like i just with other card games i it's still at this point there's, there's no number that i can say to my distributor the distributors and say yeah mm -hmm. that's fine you know so we're not mm -hmm. quite there um, but i still feel like we're a lot better than than we have been of course uh, i will say that this is all just talking about booster boxes though booster boxes yeah. great. everything mm -hmm. else is still terrible so um, hard to find yeah and and it's and it's not necessarily they want to try and it's because i think ravensburger are prioritizing booster boxes into game stores mm -hmm. and everything else to everywhere else and and maybe that's the right thing to do with the with the product they're able to produce right now but when i get eight gift sets in my store and that's actually quite a good number for an lgs having talked to other people yeah. <laughs> that's a lot um and i can't but i can't give each of my players one or you know mm -hmm. sell each of my players one and then there are there are people lining up at Disney parks with a limit of five per person. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> it was troves too, right? Troves and gift sets, sets and play yeah. mats, five a person. Why? Wow. Why does a person need five play mats? I yeah. understand packs, mm -hmm. and I understand you know, but it should like it should be. If they're just doing single packs, 20 packs, and one of everything else, right? And that's how it should work. And again, I think it's more of a case of people not understanding the product line and the staff there not understanding what the product line is. And it's just easier yeah, to say, probably. this is the number. They can buy this many. But I, I, I think whilst the booster box issue is much, much better and, the, and packs in people's hands and actually getting into gamers' hands, which is great, I think the next step now is to look at sorting that out because i should be able to sell every person who wants one a trove and every person who wants one yeah. a set. i'm not talking about hundreds but i'm talking a store of my size should be able to order 24 to you know mm -hmm. 36 of them yeah and like i've said from the beginning i i love the troves mm -hmm. even like the first chapter troves, all of them even after i think they're even better with these changes actually um and like, I think it's a perfect product for anybody, people who are getting into the game or people who are like you and me and religiously yeah. like follow this game. Um, and it surprises me that, the, that they don't make more or in the, in the case uh, like there, it was here with Into the Inklands that they give so many away at, a, at like Disney parks and stuff yeah. where a handful of people are going to be able to get them and really like... I, the only thing that I can think of is it's is they hope that people who haven't seen the game see the big boxes with yeah. Mickey and Beast and Jafar on see the front of it. walk out the door with them and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And go, oh, what's that? And then like go in to look at it. Mm -hmm. But like it, other than that, it's if you have friends that are over there that are willing to go do the whole roundabout and get mm -hmm. troves and stuff for you, or it's probably people just buying them to resell them yeah. or buying them. Unfortunately, it is a hundred percent that yeah, it's people lining yeah. up, you know, a uh, friend of the show, uh, Eric's, um, uh, from the mm -hmm. gamer went down to California and he said that he there were people who were so early there that they were in the line and had gone round again. And there were, 
men with wives and teenage kids all buying five troves each, you know, yeah. and that's not, if you are into, the, at this point, if you are into the game so much as to want, as to wish to buy that amount of product, you can get boxes of mm -hmm. packs from LGS stores now. Yeah. So yeah. that that is purely because they're going on eBay, uh, Facebook Marketplace, you know, like it's 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 a shame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, like I said, I don't want to linger too much on that, but overall product availability has been much better. Uh, regarding troves specifically, there was a change with the troves this time. Um, mm -hmm. I think I can put my hand on the new stuff if you want to mention what the new ones look like. Yeah, so the troves um, got rid of the booklet that came in there, but I noticed that in the starter decks, the starter decks actually had like a smaller version of the booklet that normally came in the trove. I forget what the booklet was actually called. Um, there's also some dice there now. I have I had all this nearby. I don't know what happened. Oh, here, right here. I have uh, the dice from the trove. So how do we feel about they're, the dice? Um, they're a little bit smaller than I thought they were going to be, but mm -hmm. I mean, they're dice. I don't. <laughs> they're not special. No, they don't like look they, anything special. It's even bad. hard. <laughs> it's it's hard to even tell like what color they are. I was hoping yeah. that they would be a specific um, ink color. I can't oh, yeah. tell if this is supposed to be like steel um, or if it's just a blend of like a bluish gray. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I I thought I would use them, but I have I have like a little mini Chessex uh, thing that I always bring, and it has way more dice than I'd ever need for mm -hmm. a game. And I just find found that was more convenient to pull out. Yeah. Um, and then I, they also I, have. I, I will say I think they're a big improvement on. Um, like in general, it's just it's a great upgrade. Yes, but absolutely. They're, just, they're not very good. <laughs> yeah, like I would much rather what we got in the trove now than yeah. the old troves personally. Yeah. Um, I've got a. Um, I use these ones. The oh D, my the gosh, D one hundreds. I love. I them. want some so bad, and yeah. I can't find them anywhere. Like no. I tried looking, and they are just they've just vanished. Yeah, I think I think I think Lorcana players have bought them all up. <laughs> Honestly, because <laughs> I see a few people with them. Uh, but they just they look great on a camera if you're playing webcam they just look good mm -hmm. in real life they're so weighty and hefty and it made me re and it just these just in comparison are just really piddly and and, and crappy but yeah big improvement I, I don't even mind the law counter being in there with them um no. a, a lot of people saying they missed the book i'll be honest with you i don't even think i've read the books or looked through the books well, honestly the, but did you open any um where did I put it? Did you open any... Uh, you want to bet the little book in the starter deck? deck? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, do, I, I haven't got I have one, one to hand. Somewhere. I haven't got one to hand. Mine's at the store. But yes, there's a little booklet in with the starter deck. That's it, I think. Yeah, there Here you go. Is. Yeah. Here it is. This yeah. is the Ruby Sapphire one. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's, it's all the same stuff. It, it It's kind of like the quick start guide. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's anything in there like... In the trove, they uh, there were like combos and stuff mm, that they would that's show. That's definitely just a rule set. That one, right? Yeah, I don't think there's any of that in, in there. But this is basically everything you need to know about yeah. the game and play the game. But um, I thought it was cool they put those in the starters. Uh, I feel like they're appropriate in there. Yeah, it's where they um, where they are. Um, the where they should be. The thing that I actually liked the most from the troves. Uh, were these little things mm. and if anyone in the chat has extras send them my way i'll buy them <laughs> <laughs> so this is what i it, love these things this is what a fully sorted uh yeah. commons and uncommons looks like in set three trove this is my entire set three yeah. collection oh, rares yours. commons uncommons everything oh really and so i've just got commons and uncommons in here i bind her everything else um my Floodborne one looks similar. It just uses the Ultra Pro yeah. uh, plastic ones, which are good, but they're not, you know, they don't look as cool, but they, yeah. are, they are. Oh man, I opened a lot more Inklands than I did Floodborne. See, that's the thing. I have my other stuff in a BCW box back yeah. here. I need, I probably should see if I could fit each of the chapters in their respective troves. I think I'd actually like that a little bit more, yeah, like just the playset and then everything else just in a bulk box. That, so that's what I would probably have to do because set one is, is quite, I've got them all here. The set one is pretty stacked as well. Yeah. Um, dang. Yeah. I opened a lot. I opened too much of this game, man. Jeez. 
<laughs> I um I agree with uh, BF Doxy here. I wish they'd sell an accessory pack with dividers, die, etc. I do oh, yeah. too. Like it, if you're gonna make the trove so difficult to get, let me just mm. buy some of the stuff that's in the trove because I I would buy five of a, a five pack of those dividers. Yeah, I love them so much. The other thing I would love to see them do, although it would be annoying at this point because we're already three in, but they sh that should say what the set is on the side of the box yeah. there. So yeah. when I stack them up, I can see what set it is at a glance because it's fine now. There's only three, but, you know, 10 years. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a hassle to remember yeah. what's what. Oh, fuck, they're heavy. I feel like there was something else I was going to say. and Now I forgot. Uh, gift set was, you know, it, that's fine. It is what it is, the gift set. It's, uh, you know, it's... Oh, okay. So I haven't seen any of these yet. There's no accessories in Canada yet. <laughs> um, well, they look good. Yeah. I like, they're very pretty. I got the deck box. The deck box is especially I'm pretty happy with. I just have both starter decks in here. Yeah. And they're divided by um, one of the rules cards, or like both of the rules cards. <coughs> and I'm just going to carry that with me when I go to league and stuff in case new people show up and I can teach them how to play. But I wish Robinsberger, if you're listening, please, 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 please <laughs> go to game. Genic, Just phone game. Genic. Go to, go to, <laughs> go to dragon shield, please. For the love of God, get better sleeves. Yeah. I use these to just like sleeve stuff up as I was opening, um, uh, product. For my videos and they're like the, these sleeves are pretty like they look nice mm -hmm. they're a little bit faded but like the art's really good it's fine i bought some mulan sleeves to play the draft in and like within the second game one of the sleeves had torn after the six games that i played the corners were all beat up and like they no way would it pass in any sort of official event or event that had prizing yeah. um it it was pretty difficult. Like the shuffling actually wasn't all that bad compared to other stuff that I've um, dealt with. But we just I've seen so many other card games and TCGs now having partnered with other um, companies that create really well good, good quality sleeves and deck boxes and things like that. And I would just love to be able to play with some Lorcana backed sleeves mm -hmm. uh, with and like feel confident in being able to actually use them. Yeah, I completely agree, unfortunately. Um, just catch up on the chat a little bit. Aaron Bob totally just pulled three enchanted out of three boxes. Not sure if they bumped the pull rates. Uh, congratulations, Aaron. They did not. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're just super lucky. <laughs> yeah, good job, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, pull rates seem to be identical, I think. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know if it's because more people were able to get product easier mm -hmm. uh, or not, but it I definitely feel it feels like I saw more people opening enchanted, and mm -hmm. I certainly opened more enchanted, but I don't think the pull rates are any different. I just I think it's just people are able to get a box this time. Yeah, and that's what I'm thinking. Obviously, you've got more chance of hitting one in the full box than you have of grabbing packs here and there. Um, yeah, all three amber. Oh really? Oh, that's interesting, eh? That's cool. Yeah, so get so you get a key there, uh, uh the other one I don't care about. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> um, it's Kita. It is. Well, now I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> what's the other amber one. I know it's Pride Lands is the location. Yeah. Um, what's the other amber one? I should know this. Chernabog. Chernabog. Oh, Chernabog, of course. Oh, that's <laughs> that's a nice one as well, actually. Chernabog is a good one. I don't uh, like it. I'll be honest. Well, if you open, <laughs> open one, you can send it me, eh? <laughs> that like it's it's fine. We've had this discussion. The enchanted's this set are better than all the other enchanted's. It's just yeah. not my uh, not my favorite out of. And that, and that, the, the good thing is, I've seen other people say, "Oh my god, Chernobog's absolute chase." Yeah, you know, exactly. And that's, the, yeah. that's you know, and that's what we've got to remember is that everyone's going to have a different taste and stuff. But yeah, for me, the, I saw that kid and I was like, "Oh my god, I need it." And it's on the way from Mississauga. Mm. Um. Yeah. All right. So yeah, that's that's launch weekend. I don't know if there's much else to say, really. We could. Uh, do you want to talk about any specific cards? I guess just like from like mechanically. Ooh. Uh, I know we have a you made me ink, um, which we'll do in a moment. But anything that's like particularly surprised oh. you? Anything that's sort of you know better than sure? Yeah. So I just I kind of wanted to talk about locations in general because I feel like yeah. for 
for like this this build up to into the Inklands, it was very difficult for me to rack my mind around locations and how good or bad they were going to be, the kind of impact they were going to have on the game. And I feel like part of that was because we didn't see a lot of the better locations until like the very end and the ones that are seeing more play right now. I think you could say um, that about the whole set, though. Honestly, I think I feel uh, like yeah, the, the, the reveal right. season was very uh, later loaded. Um, but locations are good. Like it, I was very, uh, I was pleasantly surprised, at least in a little bit that I had played in the draft, which I know draft is very different than constructed. But even in lists that I'm seeing people practice with constructed and early tournaments that are being held, um, locations are making their way in. And man, it was crazy how different gameplay felt and how much more complex board states would get with locations and then mm -hmm. cards that cared about locations and especially in the draft it was like as soon as, soon as the location came down mcduck manor was oh. so scary because yeah. like they would just drop it and it's like how do i deal yeah. nine willpower worth of damage to this thing yeah um and the longer you don't deal with it the more damage it does and i, I felt like i couldn't just ignore my opponent all game and just race them in my board state and get mm -hmm. to 20 because if i if i fell back at all and i didn't take care of their locations they still had their locations there i was just going to lose the game because yeah. then at that point they've gained so much passive lore so um i'm really excited about locations and like maybe future locations that we'll end mm. up getting well um, that's i think that's the other thing as well is that yes we've had we've had a uh, some locations here and some of them are seeing play a lot uh, you know a lot of them aren't well uh, well maybe half maybe Let yeah there's more that's play than i thought I, there would be to be I honest. feel like both of the I think both of the amber and emerald uh vanillas are, are, are finding homes in like mm -hmm. aggro -y type decks so that Neverland and uh Deville Manor is it yes Deville Manor uh obviously Those did work in draft, the queen uh, yeah the queen well they just they come down it's a it's a four butt thing that's questing every mm -hmm. turn right like it's you would play a one drop one for yeah but quested for one all day long in draft right on turn one yeah um yeah yeah the queen chambers is is obviously very good rls legacy i think is probably the mm -hmm. best one personally um but even just like agrabah just yeah which, you know it's just good it just comes down and just sits there and gains law until they take a turn off dealing with it and especially if mm -hmm. you can then generate value out of them having to turn sideways for it um it's just you know it's, it's just really good uh scrooge mcduck manor i think is pretty good actually just as a vanilla mm -hmm. i think the problem is i just don't think sapphire is particularly strong this set yeah um, i would agree and that's why it's not really seeing much play it's just sapphire in general isn't really um mm -hmm. but yeah queen mirror chamber and rls legacy are really great the the, the ruby ones are all kind of good really um yeah the steel ones are, are okay uh i'm only really running by you but um yeah i see by you more than any of the others yeah um, and that's not even necessarily for the combo either. It's just, it, again, it's just something that comes down super early and just mm -hmm. lets you do that little bit of filtering and stuff. But yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm actually surprised by them as well. And what I'm more excited for now is the fact that we might get two or three in each color every set now. You know, yeah. like that's that's the game. So that really excites me. Just, this was the first go. Uh, Bell's House is great for item decks. Cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I, man. This is nothing personal. I just don't care about item decks. <laughs> we like speaking of item decks, like sapphire and stuff. I'm wondering if people just haven't cracked sapphire's code yet, mm -hmm. or if it's just like weak. It's the weakest ink of the set. Mm -hmm. So I was looking today, and I th I'm thinking Vault Door might be a sleeper yeah. card because I can. I like. I don't. I haven't built a deck or anything, but I have a theory on like a land heavy deck that plays vault door so it's really difficult for your opponent to like interact with it because mm -hmm. i just felt like every time a location came down that had two lore on it mm -hmm. i just went crap like yeah. now i have to deal with this yeah. um and playing those really high willpower um uh locations with two lore was just good you know and so i don't know what color you'd pair it with um but I don't. I, I would. I don't know that I'd even play Bill's house because it doesn't have lore on the card. But yeah, no, it um, needs to be doing a lot of work. Um, 
But was it so? Yeah, beaded cat. All the locations are pretty mid, other than the Amethyst Draw one. Uh, I would say Amethyst Draw, RLS Legacy has really been putting work for RLS me in, good. In, in the deck I'm playing it in. Um, and I think there are others that all see play in a deck. A Pride Lands, I think, is 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 pretty good in, in the deck he wants to be in. But mm -hmm. to be honest with you, I think you could like change the word locations for characters, and you've that you've still got right. the game right. Most right. most cards are pretty mid, apart from a handful of good ones. That's just how TCGs work. So yeah, and, I, and but I so going in, characters. going into the game, going into set three, I didn't I didn't think locations were were, were playable. Like mm -hmm. you know, the fact that there's at three or four that are seeing blow homes in decks is three or four more than I th than the, than I thought it was going to be. So yeah. I'm pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it really wasn't until the end there that I feel like they showed us all the all the good stuff for yeah. the set that really uh, really brought everything together. Um, um, there's a couple of other like sort of standout ones that I that I don't necessarily have surprised me, but definitely kind of confirmed. Uh, what I thought. I think Prince Eric um, oh, is so good. Ma possibly my favorite card in the set. Like, I, really good. I'll see if I can. Let me see if I can. I haven't got him ready to bring up, but I'm gonna see if I can bring him up real quick. Uh, yeah, he he in my eyes was probably the best card that Ruby got in the yeah. entire set, and like is in contention for maybe the best card in the set. Well, it's probably not the best card in the set, but it might be in like the top five cards in the set. Yeah, here he is. Four cost is uninkable, 2-2 two, two for 2 law. Uh, when this character is banished, you may banish chosen character. Uh, the reason I love him so much is because he is an absolute Swiss army knife. Um, yeah. He, he quests well. He kills stuff. He's uh, just like removal target, but then also benefits from being removed. Like, mm -hmm. just feels like he does everything good. Um, I, I often say that I don't understand why cards are uninkable. I get it. I get why this is uninkable. It's just very yes. good. <laughs> and honestly, this is a card. I look at it and I'm like, I'm very happy with the stats of this card. Like, it feels very... I don't know, like maybe make it a, a one two or a two one or mm. something. Like all in all, I don't feel um I don't feel like the card is too crazy for what it does. Nope. No. I, I also I, I feel that way about Robin Hood too. Like just playing so many roles in a deck, being able to do so many things, kind of yeah. similar to Prince Eric, where like you can quest or you can banish something or in Robin Hood's case, you can sing stuff. You can shift him out early. Um, yeah, a really good card. The, one of my um, favorites in the set. This is the shift one. I'm gonna try and find a nice version of him here. Well, here's the enchanted one. That will do. We can have a look at that. Um, yeah, this is a five costed inkable three six for two. Shift three during your turn. Whenever this character banishes another character, to challenge gain two law. And then when this character is banished in a challenge, you may draw a card. Yeah, just a just yeah, an all rounder, right? Just like an all star. Uh, yeah, just just does everything a good card wants to do. It quests well. It fights well. It it replaces itself when it's banished. Uh, well, you know, mm -hmm. in a challenge, for guess, the most but, part. Yeah, like yeah. just kind of ticks every box. Hey, Dan and Lily, I hope just Dan. It's way too late for Lily to be up. Yeah, Lily should be men. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, this is another one that's that's again not necessarily surprised me. Like I'm pretty sure as soon as I saw it, I was like, "Oh, this is good." Mm -hmm. um, but you know, just 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 as confirmed what we all thought, perhaps. Yeah, and that's something that I'm a little bit surprised by. I know in past sets, I've done a lot of looking at card prices on the past three days, trying to figure out when I need to buy stuff and when not. But um, I'm surprised that a card like Prince Eric is two dollars or dollar fifty cents or whatever um, right Insane. now, and Morph is seven dollars. It's like I feel yeah. like I feel like Prince Eric is doing more work right now than Morph is yeah. in regards to Morph's, wet deck. Morph's good. dying a lot is what I'm yeah. seeing happen. <laughs> yeah. Dying or being bounced back to hand before he gets shifted on. Uh, Lily is in bed. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. I feel that Robin yeah. Hood is a must for steel song. Didn't pull any. Probably should buy the bullet and get him. Um, at this point, I would maybe consider waiting until big box release regarding singles. Um, maybe that's a good segue into single pricing that we were going to look at today. 
sure but yeah i yeah uh, i do think maybe it's maybe worth holding on at the moment but we'll take a look at singles as always with this before i let brandon go um mm-hmm. this is not financial advice we have no idea what we're talking about we're idiots okay go <laughs> yeah um with all of that said personally i'm waiting uh till big box release to buy the rest of my singles and i'm just praying to god that some of them <laughs> come yeah. back down so that i can buy them and when are you, are you specifically talking about the sort of higher costed legendaries because at the moment yeah. i'm looking here at tcg the, player prince eric 187 just buy them man. Yeah. Like, there's no reason not to right so yeah i'll i'll be clear or i'll, I'll um i'll clarify it, it's it's just for the expensive legendaries that i haven't pulled it's ma- it's actually primarily legendaries that I either don't have um or haven't pulled everything else i'd probably be happy for the most part buying morph is probably the only card that i'd be like i'm not spending seven dollars on morph right now i think that's way too expensive and i think he's going to come down as soon as big box hits or people maybe Mm -hmm. come off of him a little bit maybe Um, i mean he's he hasn't had any sort of post-release increase right now um you know, he's he's just come down from pre-release prices. Six forty-four. There's one showing here for uh, available, and mm-hmm. yeah, I don't, I don't like. It may, maybe he's worth. It, you know, it, you want to. You really want to play him. Sorry, go ahead. That's more expensive than Maui. Yeah, like it, when you put it into that perspective yeah. for me, I'm just kind of like, I don't think Morph is Maui. No, good. But I, but the thing, <laughs> what I'm what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say is, if if it's if you really want to play a Morph deck. 24 bucks for the place that isn't I mean, kill sure. you, you know yeah. like it's you know it, yes maybe I, I i'm thinking the issue really is more with like these yeah jim hawkins yeah jim hawkins 35 is bucks that's kind of crazy yeah i'm scared jim is going to be one that doesn't come down mm-hmm. um because he's starting to be played in a lot of ruby amethyst lists that i'm seeing that are yep. like doing really well yeah for a while he was at 15 i should have just bit the bullet but i wasn't sure that he was going to be um that good and if he was gonna actually be like be worth running in the deck and at this point i think it's too late so i'll probably pick him up i don't know if he if he gets a little bit cheaper i'll pick him up i'm assuming that the ursula's are so i mean ursula's a great card yeah um just in general but with the errata stuff and her and all of everything saying storyborn instead of dreamborn like it's supposed to be yeah um I think people are just buying up a lot of her on top yeah. of her being a good card in I, hopes that the uh, the errata cards will be more expensive later if they yeah. reprint her with the correct I think it's um, it's a bit of a perfect storm with her, really, especially if you look at the Enchanted. Uh, yes. Yeah. That's, a, that's a hell of a line on the, yeah. <laughs> on the Enchanted one. Wow, yeah. wee, that's amazing. Um, yeah, it's a perfect storm of very cool art, very playable card, possibly mm-hmm. provably first print if an errata yeah. turns up, right? Like it's just all of the um you know, it's just that it's why it's always gonna be a, a good one, I think. So yeah, if you pull one of these, I think I think it's probably worth I think it's probably graded. Like I'd probably get it graded if you pull one of these, that's honestly. A good call. Yeah. yeah. That's actually a good get a good nice early, get nice early date on it. So uh yeah nothing else is is really surprising me like if anything the things i'm surprised by are the are, are the things that are cheap um me too <laughs> yeah like if we look at some of the it just i can only assume it's just been a crap load of product opened you know um, yeah that's what i'm thinking but if you look at some of the super rare prices you know eric 187 madame medusa is less than a dollar yeah i don't think there's a super rare that's more than three dollars. No, right Piglet. Now. Piglet is currently the highest one at two seventy five. Yeah, so, that's just, I, it's wild. Just, it's just and like why? Why are all the rares five dollars? Yeah. <laughs> like that's what I don't understand. There should be so many more rares out there than super rares. I don't understand why they're so expensive right now. Um, that's a, oh and yeah, all look at rares. that. Yeah, like and uh, along came Zeus is expensive. Morph is expensive. Uh, the Queen's chain. The Queen's, Queen's Castle is seven dollars. Yeah, um, bare necessities is more expensive than most of the super rares right now. Yeah, I mean they're all incredible, and maybe it's just because these rares fit into a lot of decks, whereas the super rares yeah, usually I mean, have a, yeah, usually the super rares have a bit more of a specific role, right? But like, I can't show me an amber deck that doesn't run bare necessities. Maybe 
maybe yeah. a Mufasa build just because it's yeah. another character. But that's the thing that's weird to me though, because I think most of decks run something like in the long game Zeus. Mm -hmm. But I felt I feel like if there was gonna be a rare card that was gonna be seven dollars and yeah. just be super expensive, it would have been the bare necessities because that's like. That's the whole new world discarder, the be prepared discarder, even the location discarder, like mm -hmm. all the locations that are so good now. Yeah. But the beer necessity, like $3, I feel is a bit more reasonable for a rare card. Um, yeah. uh, Franz makes know. a good point in that the, there, just, there are more rares in the set. So each individual rare is perhaps more as difficult to get as, as some supers. But maybe know, I just, yeah, it kind of, kind of surprises me the 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 prices are that sort of whack but again there's nothing here i'm not seeing anything here that's really making me go oh that's way too much you know queen's castle seven bucks yeah it's a lot of money but again less than 30 bucks for the play set if you really want to get out there this weekend and be running a new deck you're going to get it you're going to get t so much value out of those right you're going to be playing them for the next yeah. couple of months I, you know, it yeah yeah upset me at all if i were competing in an event like in the next week or two yeah. i'd pull the trigger on these yeah. rares sure i don't have a yeah. problem with that yeah i completely agree I, there's no yeah there's nothing really like i said the only thing that really surprises me is the is, is the is the low cost of some of them um like again i'm not i'm not a speculator i don't buy singles with a view f to generate income from them but if i was I'd be buying. I'd, <laughs> I'd um. I'd be buying Madame Medusa's. Yeah. Uh, I'd be buying Prince Eric's. I'm surprised the bosses on a roll is so cheap too, and I I haven't even seen that card played very much either. Yeah. Um, and maybe it's just not as good as I think it is. But part of me, part of me thinks something like um. I've I either Aerial Adventurous Collector. Because because somebody will find a home for it in a Ruby Amethyst build and they'll hit teeth with it in a tournament and they'll blow up. Or uh, the other one I think could blow up is I think somebody might find a ho might, they might find a deck that makes Magicka Dispel work the uh, the one that yeah. the item one. And I think uh, both of those are the ones that I think could pop if uh, if, the, if that's they get, actually if they um, that's what I was working on a little bit earlier with like the location thing. Cause I was like, if we're playing uh, uh, Scrooge's vault, which is a four cost item, yeah, you know, and then we can also play Magicka and we can also play eye of fates and we can play these locations. Maybe yeah. it's too much going on there, but yeah. I can see, I can see like the, the skeleton of something. Yeah. I think you're right. So I think somebody sure. will crack it. Somebody a little less mood brain than us will crack it. Yeah. And suddenly, uh, they'll go up to a couple of bucks, you know, whether you can be bothered buying and selling them for that, like, you know, but that's kind of why I want to just go ahead and get, um, like the lucky dimes and the grandma mm -hmm. Talas and things like that now. Cause they're just, they're relatively cheap. I think like, I think if nobody cracks it between now and big box, they'll drop even lower. But like if they find something that works between now and then, you know, they'll get really expensive and, it just be like grandma is a card that I feel like if not good now will yeah. be good later at some point and yeah. would be really worth just buying while she's five dollars right now. Yeah. So I actually seen grandma tell her at fourteen. Okay, maybe she's gone yeah. up. Yeah, fourteen she's sitting at. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, I see that too. Yeah. <clears throat> But uh, but yeah, overall, I think the the singles market is very healthy. Yeah, um, for the most part, I'd say so. You know, we, we compare this back to. I mean, I I almost feel bad. <laughs> yeah. That I was selling Lilos for twenty bucks in set one. Yeah, it's, you know, like it's. I I have <laughs> to uh, check myself sometimes when talking about like how expensive yeah. cards are and not buying Robin Hood was when he was at twenty dollars because. Yeah, like Rapunzel was at sixty dollars or seventy dollars at one point yeah. per card. Um, yeah, Lilo's she was hundred bucks. Twenty bucks a pop. We we I yeah. was selling Rapunzels at hundred bucks Canadian. Yeah, and it's like I can't forget those times. <laughs> yeah, do you know? Do you know what? Um, like uh, Warlock Reverend in the chat, I, I I have to kind of push the Canadian info out of my head when we look at these because it, it isn't a straight conversion. 
to Canadian. Canadian cards are much more expensive than than American singles, honestly. It sounds um, like they yeah, are. It is. It's not a straight conversion at all. Uh, I'm just looking through my one-off binder here because uh, FCN's saying there's still some missing. Do you know the last card I needed to get out to get one offs? Map of Treasure Planet. <laughs> I got him today. It's crappy I'll rare. I need to see how close I was to that was a it. thing. Because that's okay. So that's another thing. I felt like I opened all an almost perfect amount of product this mm. go around. And I think I have a game plan for what I'm going to do next time if like it's anything similar to this. But I was surprised because I feel like for Rise of the Floodborne, there were way more like super rares and rares and things that I were that I was missing that I ended up having to go get. Mm. Um, whereas it felt like with this and maybe it was just the packs that I opened, I felt like I was able to get close to one of everything with just the product. Uh, than I had. I didn't. I didn't have a um, full master set complete or anything, but it felt pretty dang close to it. Like as far as commons and uncommons and rares go. Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult to know because like the the variance is still pretty high on a on a few box. You know, a handful of boxes right. really. It's difficult to know whether you've just had good pulls. Um. But uh, but yeah, I feel uh, so. Like mechanically, how do you feel about this set compared to Rise of the Floodborne? I think this set has a much bigger, like, has a much bigger impact and um, has much better cards across the board than Rise of the Floodborne did. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I was looking back at the legendaries earlier today, trying to, like, look at price graphs to you know see what the trends were for those and um just most of the legendaries just weren't great like they weren't worth getting excited about and i feel like at least half of the legendaries from this set are like worth playing worth getting your hands on at you the know. minute yeah i mean just going back I, that's what made me ask the question because i just went back and had a look at rise of the football legendaries um it, it's tragic tragic beast and mufasa yeah like like pretty it. much it yeah you know like beast relentless obviously really grown in cost because of the the combo and you know um but yeah that's like literally there's two uh super rares a lot more interesting stuff at super rare um yeah you know stout hearted lady tremaine arthur mm -hmm. uh yzma cogsworth queen shift queen you know there's a lot more interesting yeah. stuff at super rare um, but yeah, legendaries. It was it was a weak legendary set. I feel now looking back on it, and I and I don't think we'll look back on Inklands in the same way. No, and I don't think we'll look. I like Inklands really makes this game feel like um, it's balanced or coming together mm -hmm. or like something because it's very very early on to be really saying anything about like what the meta is going to turn into. But even having seen some of the um, like just what people are playing and what uh, is making what's topping in different tournaments that people are running, uh, which I take with a like huge grain of salt since mm -hmm. it's on um, the release weekend. But seeing a lack, well, not really a lack of Ruby Amethyst, but it, the the margin isn't so wide, mm -hmm. I guess, between like minute. all the Ruby Amethyst decks yeah. and then everything else that. Yeah. makes its way in and and the um, thing is with ruby amethyst as well is that you're right the, like i'm happy for it to be up there and i think it's healthy for a control deck to be prevalent in the meta i just don't want it to be so far ahead of everything else and mm -hmm. and the thing that that kind of fills me with confidence is you're right yes it's super early days but like the ruby amethyst build hasn't changed much you know there's been a few new pieces go into it and it's still pretty strong um Yet all of these new decks, these fresh decks, these, you know, really wet behind the ears kind of things are holding their own against it. Mm -hmm. So as much as it figures itself out in set three, these new decks will be figuring themselves out as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm excited. Yeah, like, I I mean, it's just like you said, I'm totally happy for Ruby Amethyst to be in the top eight. I just don't want it to be all Ruby Amethyst, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. 100%. Well, we'll take a look at a tournament in a moment. But first of all, we do have a um, You Made Me Ink. 
uh, oh, yes. which we'll do before we move along. And this is uh, from uh, from Brandon this week. Yeah, so the You Made Me Ink uh, is Chernabog. And the reason it's Chernabog is because um, I almost did ink in my draft uh, <laughs> uh, thing this weekend when my opponent managed to actually play Chernabog um, in draft. <laughs> <laughs> then had it not been because I was able to create quite a big lore lead that I was able to finish the game basically before Chernabog did anything. But Chernabog came down and I was like, well, none of my locations matter. None of my characters yeah. matter. You have three lore. If I don't win in the next two turns, I lose the game. So so, so <laughs> how how cheap did they get it out? What, what did they play it for? Do you remember? I mean, I think it was like six or seven ink, probably. Mm -hmm. I've had mm -hmm. to guess. Because th it's not like their discard was full of characters no. or anything. So it's just um, so they it, hadn't they hadn't self discard or anything. It was just it, there was a few things there, f like from the course of gameplay kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was pretty like it was pretty on curve. It was like. Uh, it was basically around turn six or turn seven, and they had just enough characters in their thing to be able to play it out pretty early. And as soon as they did, I just was like, well, there's no card in the set that's going to help me deal with this. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. even kills McDuck Manor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Kills McDuck Manor. Long came Zeus does nothing to this card virtually. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just. Mm. I um, I mean, you know, it's it's about as impactful as a as a beefy vanilla can be in draft right you know like it's yeah do you um having seen that do you do you feel like there's a space for it somewhere in the in the constructed meta i don't but i might just be too smooth brain like the mm -hmm. only thing that i can see where this character really shines is in something like a mufasa deck yeah. and even then i question it because my biggest struggle with something like trinabog um, is so many ink colors have ways of just removing him mm -hmm. and even even just bouncing him back to hand like that's just as bad yeah. with for Chernabog. Yeah, you shuffle yeah. everything in, oh, wow, now he's yeah. ten now, he, now he's ten ink again so like if you play Chernabog and then he just gets bounced back to your hand now what you know wow. um so I don't think he's going to be like great unless maybe you can just top him off of a Mufasa and you know now you have a really big beefy three lore character on board. Um, one thing that I will say though, there's like Amber and um, Sapphire are two of the decks that I consider like have removal for Chernabog through uh, whatever the removal for in Amber is that has like five strength or more. And then um, let it goes and like Hades and stuff, but I'm not seeing very much Sapphire played, and I'm not seeing that card being played in Amber at all. So mm -hmm. I think potentially in a meta where those cards aren't being played because Chernabog isn't being played, mm -hmm. um, I can see where Chernabog can like sneak into uh, a couple lists and like and do well because until those cards then open. start getting played and it, yeah. and it loops around right over and over. Yeah. Um, do you know what else uh, <laughs> is pretty good off the top of a Mufasa because it's got nine on the butt? Um, What's that? Uh, Eudora. It's a five yeah. costed common, one nine for two law. Yeah. So you're just losing a law, that's all. Otherwise, the exact same card. <laughs> Eh, Sorry, I just, part, I yeah. just started wind people up with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. like it, it kind of is because I mean, you obviously lose the strength yep. from Chernabog, but I don't know. You're gonna, you're probably gonna get Chernabog out at fi around five or six anyway. Yeah, she's in inkable. a deck like that. She's inkable, and when you play her, um, she doesn't come off as as big of a threat. So like mm -hmm. maybe she doesn't get so much. Uh, she's not just immediately targeted. Um, and if your opponent bounces her back or removes her, it's not yeah uh, replay detrimental. Or, replay her or Inca. Yeah. Yeah. Ch Chernabog trash. Let's play Eudora. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled three Chernabog, by the way. Yeah, I think I got three. <laughs> yeah. I think I pulled three as well. I don't know. So, so was there anything that you pulled loads of, like more than you'd think? I pulled so many brooms. Like so many. Oh, brooms. really? Yeah. I know. I know those are common and uncommon, but yeah. um, there there were quite a few. When I say I opened almost the perfect amount of product, yeah. I had just about two or three of 
every card. Yeah. Uh, and it was like enough that I know I can go to league and then just trade people for like commons and uncommons that I don't have to finish uh, play sets. Uh huh. And I walked away with like seven of each magic broom wow. or something. That's the universe <laughs> yeah. telling you you've got to play. Yeah. So for me, that was uh, like the um, like the new amber package. I just got bajillion. I pulled six Kedas. Um, oh my gosh! Yeah, and uh, <laughs> play sets of Plutos. Um, I think I got three Baloo um, and three Piglets, and I'm like, oh man. Like the world, the know. earth just wants to tell me to play Amber. And I get that. It's not really my sort of game plan. I don't particularly, unless it's like a real, real aggro y like tokens. Like I really enjoy playing tokens in Magic, but for the most part in in Lorcana, I don't really enjoy that. Just sort of putting stuff down and sending it sideways necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like the, 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 the universe was like. Just play Amber, John T. Just, just, <laughs> just play Amber. <laughs> I, um, I pulled a single Kita and there were maybe a few like rares and stuff that I pulled, but I pulled almost none of the Amber package. Yeah. I do, I do love playing Amber. It's my, yeah. it's one of my favorite ink colors and so much so, and I was so eager to get certain cards while they were cheap. I accidentally ordered five Praditas and uh. then, and then pulled a Pradita <laughs> at the draft. <laughs> so uh. now I have more than I need. So you got some trade fodder now, then with Praditas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, she's putting some work in, though. I've seen her in a few decks here and there, and I don't think she's uh, she's awful. Uh, did you see that one that uh, First to Twenty shared on Twitter today? I see if I can. Yes, find with it. the Pride Lands. Oh my, oh God, my it gosh! So much fun. It took me a, took me a second to figure out what was happening because I, I was like, "There's only one thing on one Pride Lands. How is he doing this?" And then I yeah. I realized it's just <laughs> one drops. Uh, yeah, it just discounted I everything. See if I find it to show, and people. it was like twenty characters on the board at once. Uh, that was just. I was I I saw um I don't remember what colors he, he was playing but I was just I saw that he had four ink yeah and I was just really hoping that he was going to top deck a swords needed, and, needed, and, needed, and then swords to, the entire uh, board needed the top deck of doors here it here it is okay so <laughs> um, <laughs> it's so good <laughs> it's crazy like it genuinely <laughs> looks like it's set up but I I don't think it is I think this is just I don't happened. think it is yeah that and like. Lorcana is getting I'm I'm getting more and more joy as more and more sets come on in this game because yeah. crazy things like this can happen now. We had such a limited card pool before, you couldn't really get away with doing this kind of stuff. Yeah. But it's like it feels like the doors have busted open with this yeah. set and there's all kinds of crazy stuff people are figuring out. Um so this is I just I was curious. It just show it just show you him <laughs> It does show you him pull a card at the end. It's it's not a grab your swords. Okay, so the guy wins. No, it, um, so yeah. yeah, so what's happening here then? Because like I say, I, I was looking because it's so small already. Like so, it's hard to see right. what's going on. Um, he has a pride lands. There is a Simba on the pride lands, which makes things one cheaper. Uh, he also has a rock star stitch out, so he's able to play one drops, have them come in exerted to draw a card, and he's able to do that for free. Because Pride Lands mm -hmm. is making a one cheaper, so this is a deck that runs Pride Lands, Simbas, <laughs> Stitch, and all the one drops. And then one drops. <laughs> um, and it's kind of amazing, really, because you get you because I, I showed it to my boss in work, and he was like, "Well, yeah, but what if you draw into another Stitch, or, or you know, or, or one of the two drops?" But you've got like you got he's got five ink, so he can four times he can play a two drop and keep mm -hmm. it going because it's only costing one ink each that time. Um, yeah. For, yeah, like is this a thing no i don't think so i don't no. think this happens very yeah. often but geez it's good fun eh <laughs> oh it's so fun like i want to bring a deck like this to league yeah it's like my goal for the night is just to have 20 characters on board at once and then pass and if i lose because they top deck a grab your swords so yeah. be it i don't care yeah yeah i wonder because really because there are stuff the stuff in there that i'm one that is it yeah because you've got lilo that's one and quest for two i'm just trying to think whether you need 20 out to win Oh, I don't know. I just or, threw a number out there. No, I know. I'm just, I'm just curious. What's the lowest you could do, like with a perfect curve? It's pretty much just Lilo Quest for two. I don't think there's any other one drops. I suppose if you played Emerald, there's the Curse Merfolk. Now yeah, the I don't Quest know what for the two. These uh, are the colors steel. Okay. Which I don't think it needs to be. I don't. I don't think there's a two drop, or a two lore one drop. 
No, not in steel. You'd have to go. But yeah, it's it, yeah. anyway. It's great yeah, emerald or amethyst. Yeah. It's probably for the filtering, though. Cause yes. Just like all the Simbas and Cinderella's and stuff. Yeah, just help you get rid of the, the rock stars into, into more one drops. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's so good. Uh, if, if I uh, grab your swords <laughs> and, when you play Chernobog, <laughs> start all over again. <laughs> that would be really funny. That's so good. So, yeah, that was good fun. Um, all right. What do we want to do next? What do we say we would do next? Do you want to take a look at... So, I'll tell you, before we do tournament stuff, let's just loop back around to the release because it wasn't all good. Um. You know the the when a when a big thing like this comes out and it, you know global launch, uh, it's never all going to be perfect. And there were a few issues, and I and I think it's fair that we talk about them here. I think like we would do ourselves sure. a disservice as a repository for the week of Locana if we didn't talk about some of the issues. So um, yep. the first, first thing I was look at uh, was product um, was con- like actual product control, as in poor uh, printing. Yeah. Uh, methods uh has always had its issues um i feel like eric <laughs> switzer always seems to get them <laughs> he does yeah. uh, he i don't know why hard. i don't know if it's the californian heat just messes these cards up or what but uh, <laughs> uh these are from eric i don't i don't think this that's on screen right now sorry there's nothing on screen there we go i don't think these ones on screen right now are his but he had similar sort of issues um there's definitely been an issue regarding the black ink uh, either too much of it or not enough of it. You've got a not enough of it there, right? Can you put your hand on it? Yeah, I'm looking for it now. So I don't know if the camera can pick this up. I'm going to try to show it. Uh, let me but, the screen. Oh, yeah, you can see that. Yeah. And this is just the one that's easiest to see because yeah. it's the silver is so much darker. But there were a couple cards like this. In um in packs where it was obvious the ink was just way darker than it was supposed to be, and I didn't know what happened or why. Um, but I definitely ran into some product like inconsistencies mm-hmm. like that. And I don't like things like that. I don't, uh, you know, I, I, that's nothing I would ever do anything about. Like I'm not calling no, Ravensburger about no. that kind of thing. Um, this on the other hand is pretty crazy. This 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 sort of black. Uh, yeah do you know what it reminds me of you know reddit do that thing every now and again where you can paint you can color a pixel in every 10 minutes have you ever seen that no i don't yeah it's basically reddit has a big white page on it Mm -hmm. and you can literally go in and pick a pixel and be like i'm gonna make this pixel red (laughs) right and it and it stays red. And I think like, and, I, now I, now I think I know what you're talking about. And and, and, and you can only do one every ten minutes, but but people collectively get a group together and we're like, we're going to try and make this little bit of this page mm-hmm. a, a flag of grease or whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Um, and and that. every time that happens, there's a group that will just try and cover the thing in black. And it, and, and then at the end of the weekend or however <laughs> long it goes on, they do like a time lapse of the whole thing, and every now and again you just see this black just go, like venom just kind of and then slowly get taken back again and that's what these remind me of here um they're kind yeah. of like cool looking i'm not even gonna lie he i don't hate them auctioning them off and they yeah. were selling for, or be like people were bidding on them i guess i for, believe the jafar is sold for a few hundred dollars yeah now yeah uh, now what huh, this whenever i see somebody post on a facebook let's be honest it's always a facebook group when somebody posts on facebook group <laughs> The uh, there's like a little white speck on one of their cards, or you know, it's a little offset, or, or there's a little print line across it, or whatever. They always go on and say, "Oh, is this any? Is this anything? Like, is this something I should care about?" And the comments always say, "It'll be worth something to someone. This will. This is this is worth something." No, it won't. <laughs> there there are people <laughs> who will buy misprints, but this is the sort of thing they're looking yes. for. Not yeah. little spots of white, not like no. a little line down it. They want these like cursed looking things. <laughs> yeah, these yeah. these literally look like this looks like Jafar is in the middle of drowning in ink and it's about <laughs> yeah. to turn into a floodborn. Yeah, like, it's incredibly thematic. <laughs> yes, um, but yeah, discard cards. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> cards where the wrong foiling's been put on them. Cards where it looks like it's been printed over twice and you can see two different mm -hmm. images. That's what misprinters are looking for. That's what that's what misprinter collectors are looking for. They're not looking for... I wonder if I can put my hand on it. I have, I have a couple... Um, that I've, that I've kept more for like posterity more than anything else. Um, mm -hmm. I have a couple of like slightly crimped cards. I can't yeah. imagine this is going to show up on camera here, but I have a I have a Minnie Mouse. Uh, no, it's not going mm, to show up. I don't think. But there is a oh oh, it's focused on it, but there. Oh, I see it. I see it. I see it. Tiny yeah, yeah. little crimp. Um, I also have a, a Felicia. That is even less cream, to be honest. This is not even worth trying to show that one. And then I also have a. Um, she's just in here. Give me one second. Find her. Is she in this deck? No, she's not. I have a Minnie Mouse that's got some white spots on her. Uh, and I've kept them for, you know, just for, to document them really. Just be like, oh, that's neat. But I'm, mm -hmm. I'm fully aware they're not worth anything. This is, this is the sort of misprint that's worth stuff, is where they're just. They look crazy, and I'll be honest with you. I haven't seen many of these been been reported. No. Like so, it, you know, I don't. I'm not too worried, but it is still worth sort of mentioning. You know, yeah, and it makes me wonder if this is a byproduct of Robinsberger saying, "Okay, we messed up the initial um, amounts of product we needed to print, mm -hmm. and then for a couple months, everybody was screaming at them about how we just needed more cards. Mm -hmm. So they have just like." found like they've done what they can to get cards printed by whoever will print them yeah so the quality control of course has gone down yeah um but we all have product now you yeah. know and like as time goes on maybe the qa qc thing will uh be more refined and um we won't see as many yeah, like and, and this is not a look kind of thing, man. You know, magic's been going 30 oh, no. years, and we open terrible magic packs now, even. Uh, Blake says, um, Wife pulled a Rise of the Titans that's printed over a Prince John. I, I have, why haven't I seen this? Mm -hmm. this, this is, uh, I want to see it. That's great. And that's exactly, that's somebody will pay for that. People love that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah. But then the other issue we need to talk about is um is the issues with uh with collation. There's been a there's been a there's been a serious problem with um collation. I've got a thread here from uh, Paul Lesko. You'll you might know Paul as the um the attorney, the the trading card game attorney, I guess. He's a he's a lawyer the who kind of lawyer. Yeah, he's a he's a lawyer who is a fan of trading cards, sports cards, I think mostly, but but also trading card games, um, and covers all of the, the the incredibly litigious world of of sports yeah. trading cards. Like you, you don't realize it's such a big thing, but it seems like every day a sports trading card company is suing another sports trading card company. And he obviously came yeah. into the Lorcana light when he uh, took a look at the uh, the rise of Ikor, um the rush of Ikor, excuse me. Uh, case between Upper Deck and um, uh, Ravensburger, which is still ongoing and will, most likely will be for the next few years. So, um, uh, but yeah, obviously, you know, he's a fan of this. He he purchases uh, cards that are that have been part of lawsuits. Like that's his that's his collection. Yeah. So some people collect misprints. He collects cards that are that are that are parts of lawsuits, which I think is just a great thing. Um, and so he's been talking about this a lot lately. So I've got a little thread here of some examples of it. Uh, but basically, it seems that there has been a collation issue that means some boxes don't contain uh, rares or higher. Mm -hmm. um, instead, contain a, another set of uncommons. So, so a regular passing of a pack is six commons, three uncommons, and then two rare and higher slots and a foil slot. And it seems that uh, in a selection of uh, boxes, the, the the rare slots have been replaced by uh, another set of uncommons. So uh, it's a serious issue. It's a big problem. Um, I don't really have any sort of idea of really how prevalent it is because obviously, you know, the, the greasy wheel, uh, the greasy wheel, the no, the squeaky <laughs> squeaky wheel gets the grease. Um, yeah. So you know you, you're obviously going to hear a lot of uh, you know you're going to hear a lot of people who are having this as a problem. I don't really know actually how prevalent it is, but it is a serious issue. Uh, before we move on, I just want to say if you have a box like this, um, as soon as you realize, stop opening it, document as much as you can, and contact Ravensburger. 
That is the yeah. only way this gets fixed. Going onto a Facebook group and going, oh, look at the code on this box, doesn't do anything. Yeah. Doc, stop, drop and roll, <laughs> document the box, <laughs> and contact, contact Robinsberger. The code on the back of the box means nothing. Uh, it is the mm -hmm. the code is is is, um, is for a day at the factory. It's the, the all the boxes on all yeah. the different machines will all have that code. It's it, it it documents the day that they were printed, not what run or what machine they were on. And there will be boxes with that code that are fine. There will be boxes mm -hmm. with that code that won't be fine. So the code means nothing. You can ignore the. I feel like I'm making a public service announcement here. I, I'm constantly mentioning it on Facebook and on Twitter, and I know that I'm just a guy saying this but but <laughs> trust me well i mean like, <laughs> i wouldn't we, we say saw. if i didn't know what i'm talking about <laughs> well and like there were plenty of people even within the discord and our numerous communities that were like i got this the box that yeah, you're supposed to code, avoid and yeah. and yeah and all of my packs were fine like we, we've watched people open stuff um from boxes or product that was supposed to be uh cursed and you know it was fine so and and also just to just to iterate there's a contact form mm -hmm. on the disney lore kind of website use it for this definitely uh but also use it for anything really mm -hmm. like the the robinsberger employees that interact with the community in numerous discords constantly i see them constantly reminding people to mm -hmm. submit like forms yeah. and contact forms if your LGS is not treating you right or overcharging, if uh, your packs were messed up, if there's some, if there's somebody in the community that you really enjoy and you really like, and you know, think deserves a shout, like they've even said, you can write a contact form mm -hmm. um, to them for that kind of stuff. Like they want your feedback. And like Jaunty said earlier, none of this gets fixed. Nothing changes unless you give them your feedback. Like it's somebody's job to look through those contact forms and relay things that are happening and things that are important to the community yeah. back to everybody else. So utilize that. I feel like it's not talked about enough. I feel like a lot of people don't even know, realize it. I no. forget it all the time and I'm as deep into this as anybody. Um, so yeah, go utilize that resource. It's there uh, for a reason. Um, I completely agree. Um, Lake sent me that. I can't bring it up on the screen because I'm using Discord for the call, but there's a Rise of the Titans, and you can just, it's quite subtle, but you can just mm -hmm. see prints. Yeah, you see it. That's great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, I, I swear, to, somebody will give you 100 bucks for that. I can tell you yeah. they will. They love that sort of stuff. But that's what, we're talk that's what I'm talking about when I talk about misprints and, and there being a market for it, not little scratches or dots. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, definitely, you know, any issues with your boxes, definitely uh, send them information. Stop, stop opening, document it as best you can, keep hold of your receipts, keep hold of everything uh, that you can and let them know. And they, I'm sure they are working tirelessly behind the scenes to figure out the problem Fixed and it. to stop it and make sure it doesn't happen again. And then look at, um, uh, Re, uh, reimbursing issues, you know, sending out new boxes or whatever. I don't know what the fix is going to be for them yet, but 100% they're working on one and uh, it's just going to take a little bit of time. Um, yeah. But I, I don't feel like it's as prevalent as perhaps looking on the internet makes you think because, again, let's, let's be honest. If you open a box with nothing in them, uh, you know, all crap cards or whatever, you're going to go on Facebook and shout about it. You open mm -hmm. a box that's got 12 you have a box that's got like 12 to 15 legendaries in it you might not say much and you might go and try and buy another <laughs> box <laughs> yeah well, that's you the know? other thing i i definitely heard of people who opened a box of inklands and there were zero foils in the entire box but yeah. all the foils were replaced with like legendaries yeah so they walked away yeah. with like 16 legendary cards yeah um just no foil slot yeah so, you know, it's it, it's kind of swings and roundabouts, I think. Um, uh, Samantha, hi, thanks for getting in touch. Uh, my friend got Floodborne packs with blue lines through them. Uh, Rosenberg was so great about it. She needed her receipts and the uh, and the wraps, uh, but they sent her new packs. Yeah, that's it. And they, they will. And it'll, it'll just take them a little while to figure it out, uh, figure out how big an issue this is, figure out how they get new stuff to people, but they 100% will resolve this and you'll get new stuff and it's all gravy. Um yeah, my clove had four legendaries, unlikable, not impossible. That's really good. Yeah, my both my trove, my boxes were okay this time. Honestly, 
Um, both my Trove and my gift set that I opened were, were kind of trash. Um, I actually filmed the Trove to put on YouTube, and it was so <laughs> mid that I'm not even going to so bother. Bad, you're just like, <laughs> yeah, it got it was a it was my sixth. The only legendary in there was my sixth Kida. <laughs> <laughs> i'm like yeah whatever like i couldn't i couldn't even pretend to care <laughs> enough on the, the video only, <laughs> the only legendary that i opened more than once was milo and both yeah. times i was like ah <laughs> 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 kind of had to force it out a little bit yeah yeah to the location item enchantments were wasted spots no um no. I, I think they're fine and I think we need to we need to just get used to it because chances are that's probably what we see moving forward. Uh I pulled the sorceress hat um and it's beautiful. And honestly, I'm kind of thinking I uh, maybe well, do I regret getting rid of it for that Kida? No, I don't because Kida is the one that I wanted. But part of me is like just as like as a Disney fan, that sorceress hat is a beautiful piece of art. Um Yeah, so no, I think it's fine. Um I, I I hear a lot of people saying, "Oh, I'd be really disappointed if I pull one." You're not, you're not, you're not disappointed Look, when you pull one. I that's... have a friend <laughs> who's in chat. His name is Ixia. He's gone over 300 booster packs without pulling an enchanted card, mm -hmm. and he told me he'd be really disappointed if he pulled a location as his first enchanted. Mm -hmm. He pulled three locations, or sorry, he pulled two location enchanted cards, yeah. um, and. Or he, and one of them was not a location. It was his third. Yeah. And he was very excited yeah. <laughs> the first, for the first yeah. enchanted that he had pulled. Because they're just rare, shiny things. Yeah. And, I, and like, I've never pulled one yet and not gone, oh, that's a shame. It's that one. You know? I have done that, but it wasn't for this set. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Franz, are you still, are you still no enchanted is, opening? Yeah. He's over 500 packs, I think. Um, wow, I I am working on a video, and I'm hopefully going to get it done this week. Obviously, the release weekend has pushed it back, but I'm working on a video just about the enchanted of set three and just how awesome it is to see a set and and what yeah. that means for the game and how other games deal with their chase cards and how they look, you know, how their sets and how it's a good thing and stuff. So um, that'll hopefully be out this week. But no, I think they're awesome. Uh, which enchanted do you like the most and like the least? My my favorite, favorite one. I gotta go look at them. I, in the whole game, still is Carefree Surfer. Like, I, I, I still absolutely adore it. It's here. It's it's such an incredible piece of art. It's just fun and yeah. and then dynamic, and it's just exactly the sort of thing I'm looking for. Um, my favorite from this set is Kida. My least favorite overall, probably Bell's Workshop. Okay, because it's just some books on a table. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. That just goes back to like, you know, you like what you like. Because yeah. I, I like Bell's uh Bell's house. I think it looks fine. My um my favorite for this set is so hard to pick. But my favorite from this set is um probably and then along came Zeus actually. Oh yeah. It was like the most metal looking enchanted yeah. ever and it's very uh, cool in real life as well because a friend of mine pulled that one and it, the lightning bolt really like screams steel yeah. in general the steel ones in general look really good because the, the 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 light the the steel the, the the gray just really pops on the on the foiling mm -hmm. the the namari from this last set you no know, not very not a great card not the most interesting enchanted but just f that foiling on it just makes it pop yeah i agree um I think overall, my favorite Enchanted period is the Stitch Rockstar promo Enchanted. I doesn't um, count. It's not out yet. <laughs> <laughs> Did they specify that? No. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, my least favorite is Pete. Yeah, that's I mm. just I I pulled a Pete and I was disappointed. Wow, <laughs> you've seen it. Yeah. See, I, I mean, I, I traded him away I, for you know. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing. I think part of me thinks even if I even if it was one I really didn't like, I would still look at it and think, "Oh, cool, that's a hundred bucks worth of trade in that I can." That's do, exactly you know? what I did. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. like this was before Beast was almost or Foil Beast was like more expensive than Pete was. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, like there was no other normal card that I could have pulled that would have been like just as good value wise. So I was just happy to have pulled an enchanted yeah. that I could trade away and get some cards for. Chat makes a fair point that the Rockstar Stitch is not out officially. <laughs> um, what do you mean it's not out but officially? Yeah, huh? The Rockstar Stitch Enchanted. It's officially revealed. No, no, no. It's not. But it's no. What they mean is it's not out. As in, you oh. can't get one officially. <laughs> But I don't know. somebody found one. Somebody, yeah. That, <laughs> there's been a, there's been a few <laughs> knocking around. Let me see if I can. Yeah. Who, who who tweeted about that that I can bring you up? I don't uh, know. I thought I've only Teddy seen will have. Teddy's a Teddy's a uh, That's room, true. rumor Remember whore. He'll, he'll, he'll <laughs> 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 yeah there it is halfway down the page got it <laughs> oh yeah. man uh yeah so this is um there's there's videos of it as well like this looks fake but it but there's videos showing it and it's got the oh, proper foiling on and yeah i didn't there's, see the videos um, yeah there's a there's a i'm trying to think who it was who shared it it might have been I've seen two pictures, and I don't know whether or not they were from the same person. Yeah, I can, if I can remember who it was who shared it. Chat says uh, Goons tweeted it. Goons, yeah, that sounds about right. The Goons are what on it. What kind of Goons? They're always on the news. They are. Kind of goons. It's always, a, it's always would... a risk when you bring it up on screen, and it like I, I really hope it says you follow each other. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, hate, I'd hate to bring somebody up and it'd be like, you don't know who this person you is. You don't follow this person. <laughs> uh, let's see, man. They tweet a lot. Hold on. We'll go. I try we'll to go. follow a lot. There we go. There it is. Yeah. I'm going to have to wait for the delay. Yeah. I, haven't seen. I guess I could just look it up myself. That's yeah, okay. It'll pop up on the screen in a sec. Yeah. Uh, that looks, looks legit to me, that. Absolutely, Absolutely looks legit to me. Um, I bet I can find it before it catches up. Oh no, I do see it. Yeah, that does. That does. The foiling doesn't yeah. go into the only thing. The only tell that I know yeah. is that the foiling sometimes goes into the black on the bottom, oh, like yeah. it's not supposed to. Right. Other than that, I don't know how people tell if cards are fake or not. Other than like misspelled uh words and stuff yeah i i so so what i think has happened here again my lot my knowledge of how trading cards are printed is pretty low but what i think has happened here because if you look at it it's really off center like really quite badly off center this stitch um because this will be this is going to be produced at the same time at the moment because they've got to have them ready with you know we're meant to be running this event in a month right yeah so these yeah. have got to be there and ready to go at the door so they're getting printed at the same time and and basically what will happen is every so often packs will just slide away and come down to a table where it's somebody's job to look at them and go through them and make sure they're fine um and what i think has happened here is that this one that has not past clear like quality control because it's really off for center like quite badly off center um not past quality control but has then accidentally gone back out you know into the into mm -hmm. the into the system and it it's probably happened a dozen times uh, you know but obviously the, yeah. the second you see this you're going to freak out and post it onto facebook you know so again i don't think it's a big problem um you're just going to hear about it a lot more than 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 you than you expect really uh, we're getting that yeah. graded to put a date stamp on it. Prove it the same before screen. So that's a really great point, Christina. Um, I would say that any grading company worth its salt wouldn't grade this. Because they because one, it's it shouldn't be in the public. And two, they have no they have nothing to go on. They don't know what a real one of these looks like. Yeah. Um, so even though they can obviously do the regular checks, a, a, a sort of you know card weight, uh, finish that kind of thing, um, I think any grading company worth its salt probably wouldn't grade this. But again, it's not really my area of, of expertise. Uh, a few sheets that had this instead of discard card, my mistake. Maybe it, I, I think it's probably more the fact somebody, that it's come through QA and gone back out. I don't know if it was you who mentioned this or not, but somebody brought up a good idea or a good oh, it was point. Me. If it was a good idea, um, it was me. <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> like this could have just been printed on the same sheet with all the other enchanteds and just like slipped its way in, you yeah. know. 
maybe since it's also enchanted. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, like a, a third set enchanted specifically. Yeah. You know, being enchanted with all the third set stuff. Yeah. And just not filtered out correctly. Um, yeah. If every couple of they don't Pokemon. Maybe, maybe so. Yeah, maybe so. Like I say, it isn't. It isn't really my area. Honestly, I I, I occasionally I get stuff graded, area. but um, I think it would be a. I don't know. Yes, in that case, then yeah, I, you would get it graded, wouldn't you? Because a date would prove it's. Uh, you know, it first, was first, really... you know, came out before or whatever. But but whether or not yeah. it would even get through the grading system now, what's grading takes like two months. I suppose you can pay more to do it quicker. Yeah, I don't know. No clue. Interesting, <laughs> anyway. Uh, very cool. Um, I I probably would have passed out had I opened a pack and saw this in it. I don't know what I would have done. I mean, it's the only way I'm going to get one. So because. <laughs> Ain't good enough. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, talking of which, uh, being good enough to win something like this, we do have. Um, did you see the Enchanted Stitch promo? Uh, is in the app now. Oh no, I didn't. I did cool. What's did it not. under? Is it still? Is it under Inklands? Or have they had their own Probably. little category for it? Maybe. I don't open the app as much, except well, I use it a lot at League actually. To I use it for it. for lore all the time. Yeah, it's great for that. Um, I, so I don't normally look at cards on my phone. Stitch show ten results. Uh, oh yeah, look at that. There it is. There he is. You know, now that you have that up there, I think I did see a tweet that I scrolled by. Yeah, Stitch in in the app. It's just down as promo. You can declare that you have a standard or a foil or a promo. I don't know whether it's coming yeah, out under right, the emails Timothy, or not. How crazy would a video have been had you opened a oh, man. enchanted stitch in the video? The Pinkertons would be on the way around. <laughs> 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 That's the thing. Yeah, into the Inklands. Let's see, does it come out? Come out as under into the Inklands. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so if you if you yeah. if you scroll right through into the Inklands, it's got the regular set, it's got the Enchanteds, and then at the bottom it actually has the promos. So it has the, it's basically oh, just the, league, the, the the league promos, and then that one. So cool. Yeah. Oh, it's cool stuff. Still got no idea how that's run. Still got no idea how stores even get it or whether they have to apply or whether they just get it as part of OP or what. Uh, it's going to be really yeah, interesting I'm to find out. Impatiently waiting for March, and when mm. March 1st comes around, I hope we get an announcement. <laughs> yeah, I would like to see. Uh, but talking about competitions, we've had our first notable one of, uh, of set three, I guess, really. This was in um, mm -hmm. Germany. Yeah. Uh, Die yeah, 101 players. Die Tintenlander, which I that's just into the Inklands, right? In German, I think. Sure, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I think it is. <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> <laughs> no. I think it is. I think Die Tintenlander is just it is just into the Inklands, uh, or at least the you know that that's what the set is called in German. I don't know whether it's like a straight up translation, but um, but uh, but yeah. So this was a hundred. 100 players? 101. 101. Oh, that's thematic, eh? After getting all those Dalmatians. Um, yeah. Weren't we told stores could sign up in Feb? I, we never heard anything about it. So, no, uh, I yeah. think we were told that something would happen in February, and I don't think it did. Yeah. I don't think it was stores could sign up, though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, here we go. And look at this. One, two. Two of the top eight. Two being ruby amethyst how juicy is that how of just absolutely how much joy does that fill you with because <laughs> it it's fills great. me with a lot of joy oh man i hope it keeps up there is a lot of amethyst here yeah, yeah. Amethyst but at least in... it's across three other inks yeah and five of the five of the eight you know the color that draws cards is good what, what it's good say? yeah, yeah. Um, I hate that the first turn you blew up my Amethyst, Emerald, Ursula, Bounce, and Trounce deck. Was it your deck, was it, Timothy? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen um, a lot of that deck as of late. Yeah, yeah. I know. Like, uh, Franz, the chat's been before playing something. This. Yeah. Oh, way before this, yeah. Franz, Franz has been playing a lower-to-the-ground version of this since we got 
two thirds of the cards revealed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, but yeah, we'll take a look at these because I'll be honest with you, we kind of stopped doing these because it was I was just getting bored was, of talking yeah. about Ruby Amethyst, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think it's definitely worth starting to have a look at these. So this was the uh, this was first place by Adabak. Art mm -hmm. Attaboy, I thought he said Artabax. Attaboy. <laughs> um so Oh, this is so nasty. This is look at this. So we have so we have a lot, quite a few one drops. We've got two copies of Chernobog's followers. Uh when it can quest you can banish uh to draw a card. Draw a card. Um I, that's really good, I think. I mean, I remember when it first got shown, I thought this was this would see play this card. Like, I just think a quester that just replaces itself once it's done what it's going to do. Um, yeah. It, you know, I think he's really good. Uh, we've also got four copies of the Cursed Merfolk, which is, a you know, a cheaper version of Flynn Rider. It sees a lot of plain emeralds. Um mm. Uh, I'd see there's four of them here. So basically, this is a one one costed zero one for two uh, when it's challenged opponent discards. Uh, same as the, the Flynn there in two. And then also in one, we have Rafiki, uh, challenger three on a zero two for one Lord. I mean, this is the, you can ignore the next bit, but this is basically uh, Captain Hook, but in, Am but in Amethyst, you know? So that's yeah. fine. Um, that I don't know. I, I honestly would be very surprised if that second ability ever matters. <laughs> Enough, Probably, not. you know. It gives me hope that like they're setting us up for next set, and there's going to yeah. be some crazy hyena stuff happening. But probably not, especially yeah. after seeing Shinzi. Yeah, yeah. Do we finally get? Do we finally get loads of two drop hyenas? And it makes I that. Hope. And it makes that one scar. I hope. <laughs> makes sense. I hope. I hope when we all started saying that, yeah. Steve and everyone else just went, "Oh crap! <laughs> we just make changes. Like <laughs> we'll make it work." <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, Rafiki's Poor just a, a solid body. Um, you've got the uh, you've got the 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 Mim the Mim Merlin uh, petting zoo. I think we're calling it now. That's all yeah, the interesting. Solo kind of goons like, call it that and liked it people are starting to drop some of the snakes like there's only mm. two snakes in this list yeah um for all the bounce stuff i just i wonder whether the thing, the thing i noticed with snake and i've noticed it a little bit playing against this kind of thing um is if i get a one drop location it's if they're doing turn one something turn two snake like they're not even touching that location in turn two three and turn until turn three um, yeah. So I just wonder if the snake is be it, it, as crazy as it sounds. I wonder if the snake's be getting, becoming a little slow. Um, I mean, to be, f I don't think, I don't think like it doesn't matter what you play. The location's probably not being touched till turn three. I well, a, a one drop that can smack in. Yeah, but you smack in before you play snake. Yeah, but there's no reason to bounce it. Because all Snake is doing is being the same kind of body. Uh, maybe. Like, I think you can bounce it for ink. Yeah. It's done its job. Yeah. But, um, it's but yeah, probably I not do, as good as twisting, but yeah. I do. I just, I noticed that, yeah, Snake just it's, incredibly just feels a little clunky. I don't know. Maybe I'm just thinking too much into it. Um, uh, uh, and also, you know, it's fighting, it's fighting a more and more difficult slot now Two, there was very little on two that you were doing that was that was impactful but now we have this ursula uh on two yeah that's letting you ditch a ditch a song out of their hand uh mm -hmm. there's morph on two if you're going that way um you know if you, the bookies on two like you know if you're going that way there's a lot more stuff now happening on two um the, the the you know that the, the, there's another reason why I feel like Snake might be dropping off a little bit, but I think it's still very too early to tell. Uh, friends, Kick Cloud Kicker, and this is one that I'm surprised I'm not seeing more of. Um, I, this Me is too. a great card. This is a it's really a good very card. good card. Yeah. yeah, especially in a deck that's more aggressively focused because mm -hmm. you just the tempo is really good. Yeah. Um, I, I've I've noticed Befuddle coming back in. A lot of people uh, sticking Befuddle in as oh well. And this is you know basically Befuddle on a body, really. 
It is so funny to me to, and I know I've mentioned this to you already, but it is so funny to me when I watch people befuddle morph because it just like, you just know you just messed up their entire (laughs) game plan with one card. And And that's, I mean, that's morph's biggest downfall is that it, like it would be broken if it had ward, but the fact that it doesn't, it needs Mm -hmm. something in between. (laughs) Like not having ward is really hindering it but if it had ward it would be way too strong (laughs) Mm -hmm. um yeah maybe they'll bring in something like ward like magic's ward because but ward is a keyword in magic the gathering but it means something different uh ward in magic is ward is always followed by something and that's something you have to do to target it so it might Uh, say ward pay two life and you have to pay two life to, so you can still target it with stuff, but you have there's a there's a cost. Um, yeah. So you know, like maybe they, maybe we see something like that where it's like ward one ink, and it's like you have mm-hmm. to pay an extra ink to target this with whatever. But yeah, because at the That'd minute cool. there's there's some there's some cards that kind of need to sit somewhere in between. I think uh, fox and crab, uh, crab d- are definitely going to continue seeing play. I think if not if for locations for nothing else. Like yep. he's gonna help stuff get rid of locations Crab in a big way. Has been MVP so far yeah. with dealing with locations for yeah. sure. Yeah, if for no other reason. Uh yeah. Uh, Mother knows best. Uh Ursula then, the Mother- three drop singer. Sorry. Ursula go ahead. Mother knows uh, Ursula and Mother Knows Best has been a very good mm-hmm. um combo that I've seen a lot. Just being able to bounce two things on a turn to your it's opponent's hand, you know, it's really kind solid of huge. most of the time. Yeah. And really here, it's, you know, the Ursula's in it to either draw four or bounce two things in this deck. That That's it. Yeah. You know, they're, they're your options. Yeah, like, so. they didn't go, like, and I mean, I think that just goes to show how strong Ursula can be because they, they didn't build around her. They didn't yeah. play a bunch of extra actions to yeah. get more value out of Ursula. Like, she's just good if you can play her. And, like, she's she's just a threat on board, regardless on regardless of if they have an action in hand. You see an Ursula come down, and you say, I have to deal with this yeah. now. You know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Goat and Rabbit. And then Queen's Castle, as we spoke about this earlier, I do, I do think it's a really solid card, honestly. The seven will pair is just kind of huge. Um, mm-hmm. the, the, it's very easy to get a couple of things sat, sat on this on turn five, and just and it just yeah. start giving you all that gas for the, for the mid to late game. Um, mm-hmm. Really strong stuff. And then uh, the top end of the deck is just uh, Tinkerbell, good quester, but also you know helping give something like Fox or yeah uh, something else evasive if you need to deal with something on their board, and then uh, you know Genie and just one Isma at the top there. I don't. I mean, I don't. I'm still not a huge fan of one ofs in a deck. I thought it was interesting the two Genie and then a Yzma. Because yeah. like they both kind of do the same thing. Yeah. I know you can like use my your own rabbit. And now you're drawing a bunch of extra cards. Yeah. But I was counting. I was counting the unequals in this deck earlier, and I think there were 15. Yeah. And um, I'm surprised they didn't just go with another genie. To be honest with you, like if if the goal is to bounce your opponent's oh. stuff, because the difference between a Yzma and a genie in regards to like removing your opponent's stuff is giant. I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I'm not sure why that that one isma could well just be a genie there, and it would be fine, I think. But you know, you gotta gotta give it to the guy who came first, so yeah, what he was doing. Uh, yeah. But just great to see something different. Uh, oh yeah, it's the, so the refreshing slot. to yeah. to see something other than ruby amethyst, uh, and even something other than like yes. control. Mm, you know, yeah, just more of a more of a tempo-y deck. Yeah, so uh, this is as it stands. Then this was second place, and this is what ruby amethyst control looks like right now. I think I think this is a good example of of what it looks like right now. There's going to be a lot of stuff here that you're used to seeing, um, mm-hmm. but also a few a, a few new pieces that are just going to make complete sense if you've been playtesting any of this. Uh, do you want to yeah. do you want to walk us through this one, Brandon? Yeah. So, like you said, for the most part, it's the same. You have your mini mouses, your foxes, snakes, goats, rabbits, even Cusco, Olaf, and Mini. Uh, all are familiar. Um, there's two Eric's in the list. We've mentioned him earlier in the stream. A very, very good card, especially paired with Teeth and Ambition, um, because that's kind of like an emergency banish button if you ever need it to be. Mm-hmm. And then Jim Hawkins, I think, is a real. Uh, 
Uh, MVP may be strong for the deck, but like playing a Jim Hawkins and then also playing either of these two locations, the Queen's yeah. Castle or RLS Legacy, and moving him there is unbelievable value. Mm -hmm. Like for five ink, you're playing nine. Yeah. Tiny. In ink at, at the least, if, if you move him there, worth of stuff, playing mm. queen and then moving him. Yeah. Um, and evasive is just good. So being able to get him on RLS Legacy, bypassing the three ink to move cost, and now you know it's down to one ink to move. Now all your stuff has evasive, and you can use that offensively or defensively if you need to take things out with evasive or just make things quest better. Um, of course, there's Maui's. Maui's not going to go anywhere, especially... Mm -hmm. In a location meta paired with crab, yeah. Maui and crab is like crazy now yeah. in the location meta. And then, um, of, of course, there's three B prepares. But then, lastly, we see the Madame Medusa, mm -hmm. which is an interesting um, switch from Lady Tremaine to very similar cards. Really, the main difference being that Madame Medusa lets you choose what gets banished, but you can only banish things that have three strength or less, I believe. Yeah. Um, whereas Lady Tremaine is anything, but your opponent has to choose. And so I've heard, I heard people say over and over throughout Rise of the Floodborne that um, Lady Tremaine was becoming worse and worse of a card because mm. people just learned how to play around it. Just you made just sure they had two top. things out, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so now with Madame Medusa, there's a lot of things that you can hit for three strength. Um, I do think there's a meta that we can switch to where everybody runs stuff with more than three strength to get just around the Medusa, get but the for the most part, there's some decks that just can't. Like Stitch Rock Stars is Stitch Rock Star, and like yep. you have to play him in your yep. Amber deck. Um, Notab notably for me, I know she's she's six, so she you know it could be too little, too late, but she gets rid of every uh, Jafar target. Like this, all the targets, yeah, yeah. Every 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 floodborne Jafar um, doesn't seem that the Jafar is uh, the Jafar combo. Holy world is really making waves competitively at the moment, but no. but I but I think it's a bogeyman. It's it's one of these things that people are a little bit worried about, and and I, and I do wonder whether that's enough to 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 make us see play. But um, yeah, a, a few people there. A bitty, bitty cat says. Um, uh, I think the deck should still play Tremaine, and even split of Tremaine and Medusa is good in my opinion. I. Like in theory, I agree with you. I'll be honest with you. In in testing, when I've played two of each, I've always had the Medusa when I wanted the Tremaine, and I always had the Tremaine when I wanted the Medusa, and I yeah. and I and I just feel like I'm better just leaning into one and knowing knowing what I've got uh, and knowing how to play into it because the amount of times I have uh, you know drew on drew one into one of them on six and gone oh god if only if it was if only if it was the other one basically yeah. so I feel like at least if I know what's in my deck. I, I can play into that. Um, I, I, the ink, ink abilities isn't so bad here, I don't think, right? So we got uh, Rabbit 4, Eric and Legacies 8, uh, Medusa 9, 10, 11, Be Prepared. It's only 14 only uninkables. 14. So for me personally, really I think I, I, that those Legacies needs to be 4 because as great as Jim Hawkins is, if he doesn't have a location to put down, he's he's quite yeah. understated, really. Uh, like it's not, I was surprised. Like without a location, he is not a good turn 5 play. Um, and and um, I don't remember where I heard this, but I, I was listening to somebody talk about um, new Ruby Amethyst decks earlier today or yesterday. Um, and I've actually seen where some people are dropping Madame Mim snakes altogether because the Queen's Castle like kind of does what Snake was doing with Goat. Where like Snake is basically there to like draw you cards with Rabbit or combo with Goat a little late in the game. the game. Yeah. Um and instead you can play Queen's Castle. And of course there's outs to it, and like it's not immediate, but it is like if they don't answer this the next turn, you just win the game, yeah. you know? Um, so I thought that was kind of in an interesting thing. 100%. I don't know I mean, if that's what I would cut or not, but... Even later in the game, sometimes doing just doing seven damage straight up is can be tricky it's to do difficult. for a lot of decks, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah 100%. So. And, and, like, there's no... like There's so many less answers. That's That doesn't make any sense. There's far less answers um, <laughs> to that much willpower on a location versus yeah. a character, right? Like there's mm -hmm. no dragon fire for the queen's castle unless you're running the tech steel the, card the steel that I don't thing, even remember yeah. the name of. Um, 
Rise otherwise, of the Titans. Like, yeah. And it's like, otherwise, you have to... I mean, a Maui doesn't take out Queen's Castle. You got to spend your whole turn dealing with this card, you know, yeah. if they're threatening to win the game the next yeah. turn. And, and same thing with RLS Legacy. Like, yeah. you just play that down, and it does the same thing. Yeah. Who'd have knew Ruby Amethyst gets the best two locations in the game? Blah, blah. The I Prey could probably be reduced to two sure. against turn seven is pretty much a game end nowadays. So I don't know about... I haven't really played this build much but obviously you know a, a, a true control deck will make the game go longer and therefore be prepared is still important i think in my, mm -hmm. in a, in the ruby steel deck that i've been playing uh for the set i've cut be prepared because i I, oh, really? I i've won or died by then you know like i've either won the game or just absolutely run out of steam and been hosed um the game just doesn't get there anymore with the, with with the deck so in the little bit of constructed that I have played, I've noticed that games feel a little bit faster, mm -hmm. at least right now with with what's being played, yeah. um, which is interesting. Because I've also I've definitely also seen games where be prepared wins you the game mm -hmm. because you have all the locations and then you clear the opponent's board. And yeah, now what? Hundred you know? percent. And I mean, to be fair, like the the, the deck I'm, I've got it here, I can show you. This is this is my thing that i've been playing a lot of at the minute and it's a st it's steel so it, you know it's got grab your swords and it's got big tink which for the for a majority of boards can do the job of a be prepared right you know like mm -hmm. it's so so it's not as needed um f for me like i say it just the game just ends quicker usually um yeah. But uh, but yeah, it's definitely going to be one interesting to watch. A deck like this does want the game to to drag out a little bit because it's just it's that death by a thousand cuts, right? It's just the little, it's just it's just keeping you on the back foot and just letting the goats and the now the locations just trickling up the uh, the lore generation. So mm -hmm. um, third place, uh, another emerald amethyst. Uh, this one's more of a this. Apparently that first one was aggro. Oh no, they're both called tempo. Sorry, I was going to say that first one didn't feel like an aggro deck at all. Um, so it's another uh, tempo deck. Again, it's just some really interesting stuff in here. Uh, mm -hmm. Similar in a lot of ways. You know, it's got the one drops of merfolk. This one's running the uh, one drops of Pascal and Maleficent. So it's got a bit more of aggressive uh, early game. Um, bounce. I love seeing bounce. In this. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fun. Uh, yeah, just getting you keeping something of yours safe and then mm -hmm. removing their tempo. You know, questing yep. with Maleficent. Picking her back up, bouncing their morph. It's just good, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, strike a good match. Again, I, as soon as I saw this, we were like, this is a good emerald card, right? Just a card drawing emeralds, about as good as it can get. Um, and yeah, no, you know, again, nothing else really blowing my mind here. Again, the Ursula is just, I mean, she can sing Strike a Good Match, she can sing Friends. And, and mother's, then, knows, mother's best. knows best yeah like it's it, it it's it's interesting because i part of me would have maybe earlier on in the reveal season called ursula a build around mm -hmm. but actually i th i think you're right in that she's just kind of value if you've you've got her down you've got something to sing cool sing it twice you know i just yeah i, I just don't I, it's not so much of a build around it's more of just like a good a good piece in a good stuff deck it's very thematically like a um I don't want to say an opposite version, but a different version of Ariel, where it's like mm -hmm. you like you play Ariel to find card you know, songs that you'd need to play to help mm -hmm. you win the game. And Ursula is like you play and she's only going to sing. Like if there's a song to sing, she probably sings it and yeah. she's just going to do it twice and you're going to get double the value, um, which I think is pretty fun because they're both the same cost um, and same stat line. It's, it's interesting that the and it's obviously a design choice. It's interesting mm -hmm. that the song enablers are in colors that don't particularly have the best songs. Yeah. Because you can't just stick them together. There's no Amber Emerald song deck, right? Yeah. Despite having <laughs> the two best singers, you know, arguably in yeah. the game now. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, this is such a strong card. Best card of the set. I mean, I, I, would, I honestly could agree with you. 
I could. Mm-hmm. I ju- because I just think the more and more I see her just going into anything that's emerald <laughs> and just having yeah. good value is, is arguably what makes her the strongest. There are cards that I am more excited about playing and in uh, like a, maybe a bit mm-hmm. more my play style. Like if you if you had to put a gun to my head now and said the best card in the set, I would say Prince Eric. Um, but I will not disagree with you that Ursula is 100% up there and I, I think that's a very valid opinion, yeah. I think similar to Sad Beast from the last set, Ursula is just a card that you can put in any Emerald deck, yeah. and she's going to be pretty good. So yeah, I'm I'm inclined to agree. Yeah. Uh, fourth place, uh, we did see a Jafar. Oh, it's, it, it says top eight. It's the first, second, third, and then it's and then top eight. So I don't. Oh, I don't know. But it's up. It's anyway. It's up there. Um, and here it is, our first look at a competitively played uh, mm-hmm. Striking Illusionist deck. Um, I just, I'd love to know whether this won because it got the combo off or just because it's just good stuff in these colors as well. Um, yeah, I don't know. Because yeah. there's some... This is a very interesting list. It's, like it's very and... interesting because there's very little Amethyst. Um, yeah, I noticed. Yeah. Like, this is the first thing I noticed. It's very steel. Yeah. Um, and I get like, maybe that's throughout the goat. That's one of the things I, w- I was interested in seeing with this list. I've seen people build the Jafar list and it is just like every card that says that has draw a card on yeah. it, you know, they put into the list. Yeah. Um, and a lot of that is an Amber or an, uh, Amethyst. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do feel like building a deck that more or less controls the game or delays the game long enough for you to like get this set up so that then you can do it and end the game yeah um would be a better version of a jafar list and i think that's closer to what this is um where you're just playing like more of the steel removal but also benefit and like just tempo challenger stuff like we're playing robin hood and dreadnought and tinkerbell um you know, all stuff that likes to challenge and benefits yeah. from challenging. And you're getting lots of hits off the blue fairy, probably. You know, there's a yeah. lot of, of floodball yeah, stuff of here. Um, yeah. It's an expensive deck. <laughs> oh, my God. $600. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Where can, does, it, does it give you a price somewhere on here? Yeah. If you oh, back yeah, up, look at that. I yeah. Think, 600 uh, bucks. Woo wee. I was just yeah. thinking, yeah. Somebody who was it mentioned in the chat? Too many legendaries. Yeah. Play set a tragic it's hero, Ro- Robin Hood's. Jafar, but yeah, but you know, you've also got you know, Whole New World is still up there in price, I think. Probably. Uh, Tink's got to be still. Tinkerbell's up there. probably up there. Yeah, that's probably the most expensive stuff. I Along cut Kim blue Zeus, fairy for go. Beasts, that's twenty dollars. Yeah, I cut blue fairy yeah. for go. I, I quite like blue fairy here. I do too. Yeah. Um, she was. I mean, she was really popular in past versions of uh amethyst steel lists but it it just makes sense here you're playing four five six floodborne characters in the whole list like yeah of course you're probably going to get some hits off blue fairy and draw cards it's synergistic with jafar um and it was already good in these ink colors so Mm -hmm. why not um Fran says my main problem with a deck like this is it wants to be steel song and ruby amethyst at the same time (laughs) <laughs> and is actively worse than both of uh, of what they want to do best. And yet, th- th- mm-hmm. there's something to be said about a deck like this having a bit of an identity crisis, maybe, and it's just it's trying to do a bit too much. Um, but I don't know. It just all seems like good stuff in the colors. Yeah, I don't, I I think, don't know what um, a nice curve looks like in this. I'm struggling to kind of like, uh, figure out I mean, what, a good, probably... what a good play here looks like. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's well. I would imagine it's probably like Robin Hood on one, Blue Fairy on two, Shift Robin Hood on three, Whole New World, maybe, um, or you just set up Robin Hood with a crab or like a Tinkerbell the next, you know, mm-hmm. get ready to do Tinkerbell stuff. Because I feel like I really feel like this deck is just trying to delay the early slash mid game just long enough that you can play a Jafar and then shift it and then do the Whole New World thing. And if yeah. that doesn't work. You have the tools to keep delaying the game just long enough for you to do the Jafar thing. Because that's kind of what the past versions of uh, Amethyst Steel did. It was very much so a deck that like you 
won the mid game, like you delayed the early game, won the mid game, and then closed the game out just before you got into the too far into the late game and like Ruby just rocked your world. Sides kind of um, with it, yeah, yeah. Which is why I agree with Franz, and I, I think a an amethyst list that plays steel over um, Ruby, I think, is geared more towards the mid game than like the late game and might be might be more consistent in that um area of the game and can better fight off like uh a more aggressive decks mm-hmm. than ruby amethyst could um but yeah it for some reason amethyst seal has never quite been able to like be consistent enough to yeah, never quite got along the line it's you know it's definitely had stuff to help here i think robin hood really helps along came zeus very good card um but yeah, we'd be interested to see if this one gets fleshed out a little bit. Uh, Camille says, "I see Jafar as an as a finisher rather than a game plan." Uh, yeah, I completely agree. I think I think this for this if this deck is going to find a home and do well, it it needs to do well without Jafar. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, yeah. you need to be able to replace Jafar in this deck with Spirit of Winter, and it still be and it can still win games. I think if yeah. you if you just lean too much into the Jafar, I think you're gonna have you're gonna have problems. Uh, Biddy Cat says, Fire the Cannons is weird to me, but I know it's a good card. I Anytime somebody plays a Fire the Cannons or a Smash on me, I'm like, who plays Fire the Cannons? Or... <laughs> <laughs> like, every time, it really pisses me off. <laughs> I feel that way with Fire the Cannons. Yeah. I don't feel that way with Smash. Yeah, um, but yeah. yeah, no, yeah more, Fire the Cannons more been... so, but even still, like, just I'm just like, oh, come on. <laughs> there's not been a point in the meta ever so far where i've felt the need for fire the cannons no no i it's think, I think smash smash has always had a bit more of a home but i think you have to kind of look at the deck right like what even in this say you're doing the mirror match what's cannons killing in this deck fairy fairy i mean it's killing one of your jafar ship targets sure yeah yeah the two drop one so i don't know i don't robin get, hood. i don't get cannons i suppose it's maybe it's just there for a bit while people are messing with morph or something i don't know uh i yeah, can see where the like, deck plays elsa to exert your far so you get the law from queen's castle you still get the law yeah and, and people have talked about um uh, i'm stuck for that reason as well i i, I don't think it's worth taking a card in for that no no i, don't think, I, it's worth I it. think that's bad play yeah, to be I, honest I with do. you i think you'd, i think you and that's like what camille just said i think you're trying too hard to get the combo to work and you're you're making the deck as a whole weaker um, yeah like you're doing it so you gain one extra lore when you draw a card for your turn and then Pluto. if you happen to have a bunch of stuff at like a queen's castle yeah. then like you're gaining a couple of lore off of that but yeah. you pro- if you've got if you've got a queen's castle out that's surviving the turn with a couple of things on it you're probably doing fine you're probably already winning <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh travis says more than probably pluto yeah yeah that little to that little uh pluto is little been... Plu- lantern pluto is is pretty yeah. good yeah, I, yeah I, I, just... interesting to not see his shift uh, like the floodborne guy really do as well as i thought he was going to do but the, the little dude i think is becoming a staple in the color i think it's just because there's better stuff you can do yeah. like turn two aerial feels ungodly yeah it feels crazy having aerial out on turn two yeah yeah you don't get law from queen's castle no we're saying that if you have jafar exerted you'll gain law from it You'll gain lore well, from the get... cards you draw from yeah. Queen's Castle if Jafar yeah. is exerted at the start of your turn because I mean, you do, of Elsa you do and does get, it ready. You do get two lore from Queen's Castle on its own, though. Yeah, right? you yeah. still get two from Castle, yeah. but... But we're saying it's it, normally, yeah, ready, set, draw. Jafar would ready before the Queen's Castle yeah. draws your cards, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Turn two, Ariel. More turn three, Stitches. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, just any any, like... And I, and I feel like we'll see a lot more like Pluto Doc, something insane as well. Yeah, like, maybe I think that's a good line too. But uh, I'm eager to see the Amber Ruby decks that are popping out here and there because I've seen a couple of those, and that was a very popular. You know, like you need a Doc on three. Yeah, and I feel like that's a deck that could really um, benefit from lines yeah. like that. Uh, next up is actually a Rubber 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 Build. Um, 
quite an aggressive one, interestingly, this one. Um, it, it, yeah, like it's it, it's running that Sumerian talisman, which is one of those... There's not many cards in a deck, I feel, that if you see it, if you see one card in the deck, you know exactly what the deck wants to do. <laughs> And I feel like that Sumer this Sumerian Talisman is one. It's like, it instantly makes you think, oh, wow, this wants to fight. This deck wants to fight a lot. Yeah. Um, and it kind of surprises me looking at the rest of it. So maybe it's just a techie thing. They just want to try a new card and see how it plays out. But um, I mean, it's it's really interesting. Like, this is a, um, I want to try this build purely because of Perdita. Mm. And I think, like, Perdita does some really cool things in this deck. Yeah. Because, like, you're running the two drop uninkable stitch that rushes with Sumerian talisman. And so like you rush stitch into something, draw a card cause he's banished yeah. with uh, Sumerian talisman. You can play Perdita and bring him back and then like rush into something else, you know, draw another card. Like, yeah, it's very interesting, <laughs> like weird stuff happening. But with, with like, it almost feels like a, um, a toolbox like it's not a toolbox deck mm. but it feels like your your one and two drop slots in this deck are so toolboxy for perdita like yeah. do you need to remove something bring back stitch do you need to protect your board bring back simba do you yeah. want to gain a lot of lore bring back uh piglet you know do you want to ramp do you need to ready something like everything there's every one and two drop card in this does, list does a does, thing yeah 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 board, board state looking pretty good get a piglet out to do some questing yeah need a yeah. bodyguard go and grab your simba yeah it's uh, yeah it's a really great way of looking at it um i wonder if the little two drop queen would find a home in this the little two the little two rusher oh, the for, rush the, one? for the same Maybe. reason yeah like I, I feel like i don't know I, i'm not i'm not a fan of that snow white the, the one that heals when she comes out that that um, is one that i question a little yeah i am um... That one feels a little weird. Like maybe you could slot in some more stuff because we're running four, seven, um, 11, 15 uninkables. Mm -hmm. I feel like you could put an extra stitch in there. Like I don't think six, I don't think 15 and 16 is too crazy. Yeah. Um, I would, I would, I would probably just go one up on the stitch, one up on the piglet, just play play sets of them. I'm, I, I'm yeah. a, I'm a play set kind of guy, honestly, for the, for the most part. I, I, I want, I want to try and get a deck down to 15 cards that I love. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, threes are, twos are. I, I try and avoid them if I can, but yeah. sometimes you just you, you, you don't need them. But I'm trying this deck. The longer yeah. I look at this deck, the more I just, like, yeah, get excited. It looks it looks very fun to play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does. I like, yeah, I think I think Toolbox is, is a pretty good approximation of it, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I think per Perdita's a little bit of a sleeper. I, I actually think she's pretty I pretty do. good. Yeah, I've been saying it. I put her in my top five. Yeah. I bought her when she was like five bucks because mm. I was like, I can't believe this card is five dollars right now, and she's still cheap. Like I still think she's cheap. She's kind of a little. Yeah, she nine was. nine bucks or so. Um, yeah, yeah, I think she's a sleeper because for this reason, like you, there's two drops. You can do a lot of stuff with two drops in this game, and um playing stuff for free from your discard and then being able to do it again if you if she survives the next turn and you can quest with yeah, her yeah quest just keep oh going. my goodness she synergizes very well with piglet and yeah. lucky so i don't know i think there's something there yeah that's a fun one i think yeah if anything i wonder whether i mean you can't i mean there's not that much card draw here so maybe you really do need the rapunzel gothel but I don't even yeah. if I just want to try and get more two drops in and just really lean into it, you know? <laughs> uh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, swap out Snow White for Queen of Hearts, better option. Yeah, maybe. maybe. I, I, that, that, like, if, if you if you described the idea of a deck, if you if you were like, I want to do a Ruby Amber deck that's Padita and loads of two drops, like, the Queen of Hearts would be one of the first ones I'd put in. Um, and arguably, maybe even the Shift one for her as well, just because... Um, uh, yeah again you, it's she's kind of doing the job of the sumerian talisman but he's a body that that yeah that, that can that can come out and hang around so yeah that's a that's a cool build I, I, i'd be interested to see if that uh fleshes out um we got a green fasa uh which is chernabog there he yeah. is yeah oh yeah chernabog <laughs> i was just about to say this is pretty normal you know but then as the more i look at it the more new stuff we've got in here actually so 
Uh, I'm, and it's, it's fun to see Pongo in here. Pongo is not a card that I expected to see much play mm. in a competitive um, environment. No, I mean, I say, you know, he's he's kind of doing a bad impression of Mufasa. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, it, you know, I can understand where he fits. You know, you want a, a deck that's only running characters. You're never going to whiff on him, right? You're always going to hit. Mm -hmm. Um but I, yeah, I just I, I, I don't love the going to hand stuff, especially now we're seeing more and more with Pedita and Mufasa yeah. the stuff that just puts the stuff on the board. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it just skips the hand entirely. Yeah, and also like like another reason is Pongo is kind of expensive. Paying two ink just to put a card in your hand, like an extra card in your hand, is I don't know. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, uh, chats chats going off a little about whether we'll get instant speed interaction. I hope not, and I doubt it. It's not how the game yeah. works. I also hope not, and I also don't believe we ever will. I think I think as soon as they add instant speed um, interactions, if they ever do, they've completely washed away anything they said about the game being like easy to pick up yeah. and you know, yeah, for people to play in that way. The only the only thing I could ever see them doing is perhaps some kind of uh, like trap system, you know, some kind of some kind of card that gets played face down and if your opponent does a certain thing it activates it mm -hmm. you know something like that um but no i'd be i'd be if, fine with that if they like you know you know like so, yeah maybe like a really weird build around and but i yeah it, it, the the whole the the second they say you can play this on your opponent's turn it completely changes the rule set of the game. It's not. It's not yeah. like a new. It's not like they're bringing in a new card type, or a new way to gain lore or anything. It, they're changing. It completely the <laughs> changes how the game works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that's how I feel about that. Um, but yeah, this is this is this is fun. I mean, Chernobog off of Mufasa would be fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am. Um... I don't know. This look. This list looks fun. It's it's very, uh, I mean, very reminiscent of last set's <laughs> Green Foster for sure. Where it's just like I mean, I'm trying to think about what it doesn't that. have. Well, like what what's like what because there's what doesn't two, have the pain three. panic line. Oh, pain panic and queen. That's it. I'm like because yeah. there's a lot of new stuff here, and I'm trying to think what's yeah what's gone, and it is yeah it's pain panic and the, and the two queens. I think. There's probably a couple extra things because mm. there's like there's Piglet, Pongo, Kida, Pluto, Chernabog, but I guess there's only two of, so that would take a th four mm. of spot. So maybe that is just it. Yeah, and Ursula. Okay, so yeah. it's a little bit more. Pluto's, yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's fun. I don't know. I I, I just I didn't find the deck to be consistent enough for my liking personally. Mm -hmm. um, like I like a bit of variation when you're playing, obviously, but this this just I guess that. Um... What, what does Pongo do? Do you just look at the top card? What happens? Uh, yeah, I don't One, once a turn, pay two uh, to reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a character, it goes in your hand. Otherwise, it goes to the bottom of your deck. Okay, so that's not even good with Mufasa, really. Yeah. So, you ne again, you never whiff in on this. Um, yeah, because it's not, it, again, it's not even a May. So, it's not even like if you see it and think, oh, yeah, that'd be good off Mufasa dying. Yeah, no, you, you can't even to... put it back. <laughs> no, yeah, you're yeah. like, oh, crap. I should have yeah. just, like, yeah. Yeah. So I think it's... Pluto is really, um, chat's bringing this up. Like, uh, it has, uh, Camille saying it has turbo ramp on a body. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's what you're talking about. It's Pl Pluto and then Doc. Um, you know, yeah, they're la like they're lanterns on sticks, yeah. right? They're just that's it. Yeah. They're just you know, lantern saw a lot of play earlier on. Um, so I guess you I, can... I just think it's these are favored because they stick around and, and generate uh board, well, board presence as well. I was gonna say you can get Mufasa out on three, but you could do that earlier. You could do that before with Queen and Bippity Boppity Boo. Yeah. But maybe that's extra cards that you needed. And it gets it gets rid of a non character card, right? So yeah, which a Mufasa deck likes. So yeah. yeah, Pluto on one, Doc on two, Mufasa on three. I was gonna bring this up. I'm glad Googly mentioned it. The uh, the Kita, mm. I think so. I don't know. Yeah, um, the Kita is weird to me. Like if you top if you top a Kita off of yeah. a Mufasa, you've just ruined your strength for the next for, turn, for right? 
And yeah, the start until the start of your next turn. Yeah. Okay, so, so it's only them. Okay, yeah. Never mind. Whenever you play this character, all characters get so yeah. So no, it's still like obviously you don't get to pick when to play her, but it still goes through until your until you get to ready. Yeah, I was thinking of if your opponent banished Mufasa on their turn, hmm. would it affect you? The answer yeah. is no. I was thinking right. No, she just goes to waste. I, no, I think it's no. fine. It it's it punishes an opponent for banishing Mufasa first. Yeah try to like get around other stuff um because then if kita comes down then now they can't banish anything yeah if they if they get rid of mufasa hoping to then challenge into whatever mufasa plays kid is fine and then does that have enough and like you're really not challenging much yourself in this deck anyway so like if you top a kita on your turn because you threw a Mufasa into something, it probably doesn't make that much of a difference. No, yeah, no, I don't. I don't think she's awful here. Uh, I do. I think Kidder's home is is in more of a traditional aggro-y deck, though. Honestly, like a, just a, low, a lower to the ground. Um, you know, fill the board up with piglets and Lilos and a Simba or so, and then put her down and turn everything sideways. Like I think that's just what she wants to do. Wonder Bear necessity do well for this deck instead. I j- I think if you can play, if you can answer. If you can fill what a card is doing with a character, this is you, you want to in this deck, because there's nothing worse yeah. than Mufasa dying and you turning one over. And even if that's only a one in, uh, you know, like a, a one in fifteen or one in fourteen chance. Uh, yeah. So the only yeah. the only difference between like running Ursula over the bare necessities, and arguably you would still want both in the deck, but. Yeah. Um, I think you're mainly concerned with songs anyway, because yeah. it's the songs that are, it's the grab your sword, it's the strength of a raging fire, it's yeah. the be prepared, the it's yeah. all the stuff that's just going to take your characters out. You don't care if your opponent's playing um, locations or items mm-hmm. against this deck. You're playing yeah. your characters and you're turning them sideways until yeah. you hit 20 or you lose. 100%. Yeah. No, it's fun. Lots of twos for the star- rock star. Chinderbog is just fun off the top. Genie's fun off the top. Yeah, I, I, maybe, maybe, maybe it's a bit stronger than I than I felt like it was in set two. I, I wasn't a huge fan of the deck in set two. I played it for a while and never really gelled with, well with it. Uh, and then the last one is a steel song. Um, again, just uh, yeah, kind of as you'd expect. Really, it's just it's just literally adding in a couple of new songs. Uh, the Chernobog is weird. I'm surprised. <laughs> well, I mean, there's only. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's only seven new cards from the new set in this deck. Yeah. There's two Bear Necessities, three Along Came Zeus, and two Trenobog. Yeah. That's it. I Which is wild, because may... Amber Amber Seal got some really good stuff. So the, the reason why this doesn't necessarily surprise me too much is because this event was run the day after the set came out. This oh, may yeah. just be that this is all the dude pulled. That's, <laughs> I mean, know? that's exactly what I'm thinking. When I see two bare necessities in this list, yeah. I think this is literally what this guy have, could afford to open and, or yeah. found yeah. and threw into the deck and yeah. ran with it. Yeah, and did well and did relatively well with it, right? Yeah. Eight, yeah. Top eight yeah. in a hundred player uh, thing. So, yeah, I think that's all we're seeing here, really. It's just it's, he was already running Steel Song and he's threw in a few new tech pieces. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you want obviously Bear Necessities goes to four. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I don't think Chernobog is in this deck. Chernobog's weird. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't think it is. But otherwise, I don't, I don't hate anything here. No, it's very Steel Song, but um, rest of the floodboard. I think Benja's at the currently has really fell off. Um, just yeah, just don't just... see anyone playing items. No, nobody's playing items. There's no fun, yeah. fun items. It does make me wonder if spell books or um, um, flutes will find yeah. their way back. Yeah, yeah. Just while while, while Benji falls off, somebody somebody will do it. Somebody will figure out the magic of the spell thing, and uh, there'll be an amethyst sapphire yeah. item deck that just explodes for a week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no flutes. People can start to realize how bricky it can be. Yeah, I, I think I think flutes is a two of. I know I just mentioned about not loving non play sets, but um f- flutes can be a little bricky later in the game, but it can also win games. Like it's it's a very 
solid uh, win condition for this deck, honestly. I think the thing now, like, flutes were, were good because they were a great finisher. I mean, they were kind of like goats, but for a steel song, mm -hmm. um, all you needed was the song. But now, I don't know that Amber Steel struggles to finish games like mm. it used to because of the new shift targets and things in, like, just the good cards that they got like just Robin hood and Kita by themselves yeah. are great cards in steel song decks for various reasons. And are also happen to be great questers and like push their makes it easier for you to quest and like push your win condition even further yeah. and slow your opponent down. Um, so I'm sure there's a list out there with flutes, but I don't even know that they're necessary anymore, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's fair. That may be right. Maybe just some good solid questers coming down once the board's been dealt with is enough mm -hmm. now um mm -hmm. but i don't know I've, I've seen a lot of games where you know people are, people have just let the storm rage on their own thing just to win you know like it, it yeah there is i still think there's something you said there i understand playing a two of but why singles on his question i i don't i don't know i don't know because i just there's no way of knowing you're gonna see it it's I yeah. guess it's in some ways it's kind of like a sideboard in as much as in game That's two. What I'm thinking. Game two that you know they're playing spell books, you'll keep the Bender in your opening hand. Yeah, it's an, it's <coughs> like but the one off Hades there, I don't I have no idea. <laughs> I don't love it because it feels yeah. like it feels like you're very on the fence. Yeah. And I'd much rather just increase consistency yeah. and pick I'm betting on there's going to be items or I'm betting there's not going to be items. Yeah. And so I'm going to play a binge or I'm not going to play a binge. Um, or, or like I'll not play a binge or I'll play at least two binge, you yeah. know, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But there you go. That's uh, that's just the top eight. I think we've gone through all of them. Yeah. Uh, we've and and just, and how good is that, that they're all a bit different? Yeah. I mean, it's so fun. like, Oh my God, it's, it's so refreshing. <laughs> to be able to look at a top eight list and have stuff to talk about more than, oh, they decided to put crabs in here instead yeah. of left yeah. in, I, or well, I, they I, played I, in Shadow. I've literally been like, saying to people, like I, I uh, like when you and uh, Franz commentated my tournament the other week and, you know, we were excited because they played a, a spell book or a shadow or, a, you know, yeah. like it's just, it's, it's just, that was the only variation that we got. So, and that's all there is yeah. to talk about. Yeah. Like you can, after three months of Ruby Amethyst mirror matches over and over again, there's only so much that you can say before people's eyes glaze over. Yeah. Um, and so I, again, like I said earlier in the stream, it's too early to tell if this will like continue to be the case, mm. but I think it's a really promising start. Like yes. all the cards, all the cards we said were going to be good and we're going to slow down a lot of what Ruby and steel and Ruby Amethyst were doing um are in these top eight lists and they are and they're working right are, yeah like they're it's, working yeah we were all sitting there hopeful that ben Assessis and ursula would matter and they they do they and are they're here yeah. Yeah. yeah so that is very promising yeah 100 percent. the only thing i'd love to see sapphire um mm. just to, that's the only ink that's missing and like i'm i'm not this isn't a complaint at all because i'm very happy with at least how this looks now but it would be perfect if there was like a sapphire deck in here somewhere yeah oh, excuse me that's probably telling me that we're done <laughs> 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 um uh was there anything else you wanted to mention before we sign off um i mean not really i, I wanted to talk about the canes thing is that how you pronounce it in france they had the really cool setup oh yeah there. we can look at that briefly um, yeah there was there was an awesome uh i forgot about this sorry i've got, I got in my head that the the convention we just the, the the tournament we just talked about was it but yeah here i'll put this video on um yeah the video looks really cool yeah. um i don't know it was just it was a like it was a lot for them to have this whole setup. Oh, wow. Um, Such a the, step the up, Luminary. right? Yeah. yeah, like it's just so, so cool. I feel like this just gives us a sneak peek of what we can maybe expect to see at like official events coming or fan events coming. And it makes me very excited because yeah. um, I've been to a couple conventions uh, and seen people go to a couple of different conventions that are that run Lorcana tournaments. And of course, They'll never be able to do something as extravagant as this. No, only the but official it, stuff is gonna is where you're gonna see this kind of thing, right? 
but it is kind of like you go there and then you play the game for a couple hours and you walk by a couple booths that have Lorcana cards all across the table and like that's about the extent yeah. of it and like this looks so much more entertaining and fun and yeah. like I don't want to say enjoyable because the other stuff is enjoyable too yeah. but um, just a much better experience and it makes me very very excited for yeah, whatever really... they're planning a really fun space like every single one of those things there is a screen it's insane like all of those are yeah. screens just or at least lights you know lit up things yeah. just, i don't know i saw this and and i just, i saw this in work and i said to my boss looks like the first chapter checks have been cashed doesn't it like, yeah, isn't it? yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a big uh, big step up um quality and uh, wise yeah and they've got artists there and stuff i'm just just seeing this in the in the corner of a generic in, in a general tcg com uh, gaming convention just yeah. really excites me for whatever the official stuff looks like this year because this is this is a real great taste of things to come i think mm -hmm. very yeah, exciting that's all that's all i really wanted to yeah look at awesome all right uh, so what does your uh, what does your week in the ink look like, uh, Brandon? Ooh, that's a good question. I got a lot of singles coming in, so mm -hmm. excited about that. Getting a bunch of singles, I'll be able to start putting decks together. The um, LGS that I'm going to start going to again, it was a bit further away. We're doing a couple weeks of starter deck. Uh, like it's it's a tournament, but I don't think there's any prizing mm -hmm. uh, other than I think the top people maybe get a. Um, first choice at a pin or a promo or something sure. um and they're changing things so that everybody gets a promo that comes in because we have enough people that we can just hand them out which i think is nice yeah that's great um so i'll be uh probably playing an amber emerald starter deck and looking at what uh what i opened in the packs and slotting those in and they just do a thing where every every week we'll be able to go in and i think we can buy two packs and then like rainbow whatever we want out of those packs we can put into the starter decks oh, okay. and we'll like we'll play those for a couple weeks um and then we'll switch to another thing where i think it's like uh, a five dollar tournament one week and the next week it'll be something else and then five dollar tournament and that kind of thing so cool. doing that the starter deck events i'm excited about that um got some videos planned for the product that I'm opening. Otherwise, I'll be brainstorming some uh, videos to make in the interim between uh, set releases and mm -hmm. news and that kind I, of stuff. I think I'm finally at the point where I can do a pretty good uh, live play recording. At least, you know, just mm -hmm. top down, just one v one. Finally, feel like I've got the 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 gear and stuff I need for that. So I'm going to be looking at also doing some uh, deck techs and just not necessarily like. Uh, real sort of meta stuff but you know fun things that you can take to locals mm -hmm. uh, and actually get some actual sort of paper gameplay with them and stuff so i'm excited to do that and then uh, and yeah i i mean as much as i think it's great that people are finding ways to to get uh cards into people's hands and stuff through like starter deck tournaments as a store not too far from me that i can go to that does like a poor carna thing or you know or a street rat thing whatever you want to call it where it's just commons and uncommons and they usually do that for the first month until people mm -hmm. get the cards they need and then they change it. Me personally, just because I am able to get hold of products and I'm able to get a lot of products into people's hands, uh, like I want to hit constructed. I want to hit the ground running. <laughs> yeah, like, I, like, like tomorrow night, we're having it. Like we, our league is Saturday morning, but tomorrow night I've organized like a, for all of us are a little bit more competitively focused. I'm like, right, come on in, get a deck built, let's go. Like, I want to, I want to <laughs> yeah. get, I want to get games in. I've got a deck built. I'm happy with it. I want to play it. You know, so, um, so yeah, I've uh, so tomorrow we're going to be playing that. I've got my uh, the Ruby Steel sort of pirate location thing, and then I've also got a Emerald Amethyst uh, that the Agro E bounce the, the the thing that we looked at a bit earlier, the a version of that only with three Ursulas. So that's all I got. <laughs> that's still pretty good, I guess. But yeah, that's really good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, otherwise it'd be it'd be good fun. So I'm hoping we get uh, lots of play in over this week, and next week we can have another look at the meta, and it still looks yeah. diverse and rainbow, and uh, I hope so. yeah, and maybe we'll have some um, some store championship news to talk about next week as well. Oh, that would be great. That would be, be amazing. Uh, but until then, you can uh, you can find me here, uh, Brandon. Where can people find you? Uh, Y'all can find me 
on YouTube at B squared 24. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at B squared 24, capital Y, capital T. There you go. Until next week in ink. That was this week in ink.